17 articles, probably one or two of them will be withdrawn. Uh, the first article is the planned budget adjustment for the fiscal year 2019 omnibus budget. Uh, we have the amounts that were uh, voted at the annual town meeting and we have, we're still working on the amounts that we need to adjust this to. We're missing the free cash figures, so we still don't have that information. What was our schedule? Schedule was that it was supposed to be submitted for certifica certification on the 31st. Okay. So right. we're right on that cusp. So 31st of what? August. August. Today's September 5th. Yeah. We're on the cusp. That's not a cusp, that's a week. Okay. <laughs> a week and a cusp are not the same thing. Right. <laughs> I think we have some so do we know. Is the treasurer is out of the office right mm -hmm. now. Two treasurers out of the office. Okay. For free cash, doesn't she so, have the assessor? Well, they, um, my understanding last time we spoke is that he had everything he needed from the treasurer and the, the collector this year. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some delays in the past, but that our staff had met the requirements. Yeah. So, do you, I mean, do you know what the... I don't know what the hang-up may be, and I don't have a figure for you, so... so Definitely so don't want a figure if you don't have a figure. No, right. no guesses, but I'm just... Sorry. So hopefully we will have that for next week. We have another meeting next week, yeah, so we should, we should. hopefully we'll have those numbers. So the only then. one that's on the money is the school. They're they're firm with that. Yeah. Well, no, they're actually they're not. I they're had not a conversation even. with Ann McKenzie this afternoon. Well, let's uh, go. Let's go through this because okay. there's some things on so, there for them. So we'll continue. All right. So Article One is still a work in progress, and I'll present you the information that everybody's looking for okay. at your next meeting. Article 2 is a revolving fund. Um, the Park and Rec Commission are, um, are interested in acquiring the after school program formerly known as Hadley Kids Incorporated and they would like to take over those functions and pay for that out of the revolving fund. So this would add to our list of revolving funds for after school programs formerly handled by <coughs> Hadley Kids Incorporated. The ex annual expenses would be about $50,000 and this is a startup year, so we're being conservative with that number. And the amount that can roll over from one year to the next would be $10,000. So this has no impact upon the tax rate uh, and it would be in keeping with the Park and Rec Commission's uh, presentation to the board about a month or two back about taking over Hadley Kids Incorporated. Do we want to do any recommendations this evening? If, if we're all in favor of that, would you like to do that this sure. evening? Sure, yeah. yeah Can I just ask a, uh, just sure. a question, a clarifying yeah. question? So didn't, we had a revolving fund for Park and Rec previously, right? Yes, we did. So is this the same fund expanded, or is this strictly this isolated? It looks like it's only for the after-school program. Right, so this would be only for the after school month uh, program. And it's you were specific for it, or I don't discuss it. Or yeah. When they came that evening, it was just going to be a revolving account for the after school program. Yeah, no, I, I just want to make sure because in the past, there. So 
So then my second question then, if it, if it is just for the after school program, um, previously we had instituted a revolving fund process for their other programming, mm -hmm. so what's happening to that programming that if it's not included in here? That programming would be uh, handled by the revolving fund that's already set up. And that has a $20,000 kind of carryover from one year to the next. Oh, this is, okay, now I've got it. This is a completely separate article. Yeah, I'm correct. thinking yes. of the annual town meeting where no. we already voted. No, this yes. is right. separate. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So as we get into it, there would be an opportunity for us to revisit these two revolving funds and see if we can't combine them. But we would have to at least establish the after school program as a revolving fund to get the, uh, the first year running. Okay. So sorry, you said you, uh, I'll make a motion to approve Article 2. Okay. Second. Second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous with the final. Here we are. Uh, the select board and you people will bring it up with your next Yeah, we don't meeting. have enough. Yeah, so we'll, we'll <laughs> wait for your recommendation at the next one. We're just okay. clearing our table right now as Perfect. we go along. If we it can. helps us too. And we have Park and Rec Trust on Article 3. Article 3, so this would be to take the balance of the gift by Hadley Kids and waiting for a final figure for that that will be a substantial sum of money to set up a trust for the purpose of park and recreation programs. Uh, so that would be a source of funding in the future for park and rec. Um, so this is a right for right now, just transferring money, the balance from Hadley Kids Incorporated to uh, a new trust, which would be uh, ad administered by park and rec. So when you say a substantial sum of money, are we talking 5,000 or 100,000? Talking somewhere in the neighborhood of the, of a hundred thousand. And what does a trust mean, as opposed to like a stabilization fund or something along those lines? Well, the trust would be a legal uh, pot of money that would have certain parameters about uh, how it's used. How it's used, the monies that go in or. Well, that's what. <coughs> no, but. There, I mean, it says right here their annual expenses are around fifty thousand right now. So it's just transferring the initial amount into that fund. Oh, we're going down to the third article, John. Yeah. We're on the third article. Yeah. The, the second one it's we just voted fund. on. Okay. But I'm why? Sorry. But why wouldn't the money here be the seed money for? The well, I think it's going to work the same as the, the second article. Pretty much. No, I don't think so. No. No. It's Had Hadley right. Kids and Pump Inc. is different. Right. It's a totally different. Um, I mean, I have entity. No, I have no issue with them using using money for other programming, but but are we in Article Two? Article Two would be paid. Uh, that money comes from fees Straight paid by revenue. participants. That's a revenue. Okay, so the town's not seeding any money into Article 2. That That's just comes correct. from their, their billings. That's right. And so the parents pay the tuition or whatever for Hadley Kids Inc. and it gets deposited here. Yeah, correct. And then all the expenses for that program, yeah. so it's self-contained. So the assets of Hadley Inc. Go would, into a trust. would go into that trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do we have any language on the trust? I mean, yeah. I know that Linda was working on that, so I, I don't have that language right now. Mm -hmm. Hold on that one to vote. Do you have yeah, just for your information. I mean, I'm not. I don't Yeah. Yeah, I was just kind of wondering: is it something where they could take all the money out at once and buy a big something, or yeah. is it something where they can only use it ten thousand a year? A lot of those trusted balance? things have to be with the approval of the select board anyway. That's why I'm asking. I mean, mm -hmm. it just right. and it should have provisions too. You know, anybody that draws on their revolving accounts has to go through the select board even though they're set up for a certain um, department. For, right. for the trust, I don't right. think all of them work that way. Is that true? Well, the woodchuck the, does, but not. The woodchuck, but then you've got a bunch of cemetery ones. Right. And they don't require our approval, do they? No, they don't. Uh, yeah. There are certain balances that are, you can't touch, mm -hmm. certain balances which are expendable in income. It can be used as a funding source in order to George Edwards Trust is like that takes a tummy to go to expend. So I guess we would have to see what the trust is. I mean, if George Edwards funds for you anywhere, anyway, I think Park and Rec was used some of that one. 
they? They yeah. did at one point, yeah. Yeah. Right. Just we wouldn't want them to really draw on that for operating or something like Correct. that. Correct. Right, yeah. right. So we'll wait to see what the language is. Article 4. Article 4, this is a housekeeping article, so every year, every town meeting, we look at, at opportunities to go to old articles that have balances left in them and we can't use them for other purposes. So we, in the first block, you'll see that we're returning money back to the uh, funding source from which uh, that money came from. So if you look at the top of the list, there's balance of $3,667.34. That's uh, left over from when we did the town hall parking lot. Uh, that uh, funding came from the capital stabilization account, so we'd be putting it back into capital stabilization. And the bottom of the uh, block, you'll see the substantial amount going from the library electrical project, which uh, the Community Preservation Act uh, voted to request that this be with, uh, returned. So $85,000 would go back to the Community Preservation Act. Okay. Um, there's two rate studies, water white rate study, sewer rate study. There was a late bill that came in on both of them. So rather than $6,000 each, it's uh, 6000 minus 1300 okay. For both or for mine? Yeah, for both. it was a $2,600. Are the library trustees aware of the electrical? And yes. There and they're yeah. okay and with some it. They're okay with it. I'm not okay with it. I think that uh, returning a substantial amount of money back to the CPA for a project, which, if given how things may go on the 11th, we may need that money to upgrade the library structure. So I, I ask that we defer this to the annual town meeting, but they insist so. But if it's not using, well, they, they've, you know, they've said that they would work with us on this one, mm -hmm. so I'm okay returning the thirty-five thousand. Well, I'm just saying, why don't? That is kind of a. All depends on, on what we don't work. have to vote tonight. Yeah, all depends on what we're going to use that building for. Right. How much money we want to soak into it to make it accessible. Okay. All right, so yeah. the bottom block is uh, borrowing authorizations. Here we're not returning money, we're just reducing the original borrowing authorization in order to clean up the books. So you can see for the fire truck pumper, we had to borrow $761,250. We don't need all of that borrowing authorization, so we're asking to amend it to $761,000. $29.94, and that will tidy up the chart of accounts. So what would, what what was actually spent? Uh, $71,029.94. $71,029.94. Whatever that is. Yeah, whatever, whatever this number right here is. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do we want to take any action on any of this, or we're going to wait until we have more on the electrical library? I say let's wait until after the planning board meeting next week and see where we're at. Okay. Yeah, or just wait. How about just finance wait. committee? You have anything you want to add on this article, number four? Does anything look it amiss looks, to you? It looks okay to me. I, I, I am a little familiar with the uh, CPA one because I was um, mm -hmm. there with that one. I know that they received, um, I did mention um, because I had talked to David Pryor that maybe he wanted to wait on that. Um, because we didn't know what, exactly what was going to happen, but the um, the chair had already received a letter from the library trustees saying that they didn't want it anymore. Oh. So, well, help prove to them. Thank you. Yeah. Or well, perhaps. Let's <laughs> 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 just <Housekeeping>. <laughs> Okay. Next, Article Five. Yeah. Article 5, this is something that we've talked about when we have the emergency work done on the sewer line on, on, at uh, Route 9. Uh, this would transfer from sewer impact fees $80,000 to the sewer reserves. Um, and I'll clean up that language, but uh, the, the purpose is to provide additional money in the reserves that we will need in order to get through FY19. Marlon, you may have something more to say about that. Uh, that well, that basically sums it up. The, 
it was unexpected money to be spent. Um, and as we went through the study, uh, went through the models and everything, uh, basically this 80,000 needs to be transferred back into reserves to stay on our, our schedule somewhat of the, the model. And then we recently that, so. <coughs> Motion to approve. Second. I have one more question. Uh, just where does that put our sewer impact fees fund balance. with that balance approximately? Again? After the approved, uh, I can get you the exact figure, but I think we're somewhere a little over, just over 100000 Okay. Somewhere about. So how much should we give back at the end of uh, uh, June 30th out of last year's budget? Out of the operating? Yeah. Uh, what was the balance? I don't have the exact figure, but we're down around twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recommended fund package. It looks like the only thing on there is. Uh, I just put that in for uh, illustration. Okay. And we're waiting in the free cash too for that. Yeah. So, right. so you're meeting on Monday. Yeah. Okay. And number eight, reserved for CPA cemetery. All right. So there are three CPA <coughs> articles here. The first two relate to the sewer, uh, yeah, not sewer, sewer oh, the cemetery. <laughs> Sorry, cemetery. It's been a long day for us. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so the first one is uh, for 23,000 from the historic preservation set aside uh, for the Hadley Cemetery Committee to preserve and restore <coughs> the historic uh, gravestones at Hockenham Cemetery uh, with the two two year sunset provision on the uh, on the uh, article. So CPA has about $1.7 million in here, so they have plenty of capacity to absorb a $23,000 project. And it was a unanimous decision that night, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they, pre they presented very well. They had, a, they had a great plan. They did a wonderful job. In memory of Fred Oakley, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this $23,000. Second. All there? Aye. 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 Second article is for $12,000 from the same preservation set aside for the Hadley Cemetery to conduct a study of possible restoration and conservation in the uh, cemeteries of Hadley. Again, with this two-year sunset provision on this article. It was unanimously approved by the CPA committee. Motion to approve. Second. But why do you have to have a study? Well, they did the the first one where the Hackenham, that was, they had already done that study. They oh, knew okay. exactly what they needed. Okay. And, and so they had the plan all set. Okay. Um, this is for all the other cemeteries. They don't have a plan. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so I may need some help with this one. The next one is for the North Hadley oh. Congregational Church. $26,000 for additional restoration conservation work for the steeple and roof area of the church. What did we give them the last time? We gave them about 50000 a little bit more than $50,000 of CPA money. I think it was 54000 Was it how much? I was saying. It was 52 so. maybe. So what's left to be done with it? So when they went up to the steeple um, and they were doing the work, mm -hmm they found a lot of problems from water damage okay. in the roof. Um, so there was a lot of questions about this, but they felt that if and, and if they don't do the work, they're gonna, you know, a lot of the church is gonna be, you know, they have to preserve the whole church so it stays up. So it's the roof. The church is going to put $10,000 into it. So the project is a, uh, a $36,000 project. So the church has the 10. Um, and this will be 26 in the town. And can you refresh my memory? The the one vote against it was was that because they CPA didn't feel 
that they should get more money for the project, or was there a specific reason? I don't think he had a specific reason. Um, I just felt like he thinks that there was, you know, it's a, a because because it's it's and it's touchy too with the church. Yeah. They're a little nervous about yeah. it, but they, they they said okay, it's it's for the outside of the building. Right. Yeah. Um, but he, they were saying, well, is it maintenance? And, and most of us said, well, we don't think it's maintenance because if you don't restore this building, it's going to fall over. So we called it restoration. But this particular member called it maintenance. Okay. Um, sure. So he said no. So this runs into the act and decision by the state uh, Supreme, Ju judicial Supreme Court. Uh, that decision said that we would have problems giving money to um, uh, uh, religious organizations, but the, they said so in such a way as to make it completely unclear to cities and towns as to how to proceed on this. So, um, well, the, the last town meeting there seemed to be a good amount of support for giving the money. Yeah. There was, you know, the discussion about religious organizations with town money, but the yeah. historic factors won out on mm -hmm. the argument. So. And I think the, the church itself is listed in the uh, uh, Register of Historic Places. Mm -hmm. And the court, be, when we gave the uh, money the last time, they had to put a deed restriction on it. Yeah. Uh, that was part of the deal, was the deed Yeah, I remember the uh, ambassador, was, or whoever that was that spoke, was very yeah. accommodating. Mm -hmm. So this was just unforeseen things. It's something that when you pull it apart, just like you see on TV, when you pull it apart, you find out, oh, this needs to be done and this needs to be done. As we called it years ago, it was the Pandora box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The money mm -hmm. pits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I think, you know, we can approve it for whatever it's worth, but it's really going to be uh, the voters that will decide on this, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Okay, Brianna. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 What I'm voting for is we don't have too many historical places left, and we're knocking uh, Booker School down. And you know they seem to be disappearing quite quickly. Your famous North Hadley Hall isn't going to look. I like could make it if it gets struck again one more time. <coughs> <laughs> don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Oh, well, it's a thought. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, Article 10, pending application for CPA land, and that would be... It's 11. 11. Yeah. Mm, there's an opportunity to for the town to exercise its right of first refusal on Chapter 61A land, um, and that uh, is going back to the CPA for action on the 17th. And potentially, uh, I think Park and Rec is well, and yeah, so the, there's a lot of <coughs> confusion, understandably, about it, because again, it was kind of something that came at the 11th hour. Um, but just for purposes of clarity, the, the way that the request is being worded is for land acquisition. Um, it, it, that is in accordance with the open space um, identified needs within the master plan, and then specifically access to the Connecticut River. A, a lot of people are understandably jumping ahead and talking about you know, building structures down there, be, you know, having a beat. I mean, that's that's not the discussion right now. It's purely land acquisition. It hasn't even come before us for 61A. Exactly. So that needs to come before us as a select board, whether or not we will yeah. right. want to approve yeah. by ourselves. By fall town meeting, I don't think we're even going to be at that article. At so, that point, where this article is right now anyway. So anyway, just letting you know so the, where the status is of that. So it was being reworded specifically to make it clear that it was land acquisition for purposes of conservation, um, CPA. Would that maybe come in next week? Would it come in next week? I think so. To rewrite? Uh, yeah, I've actually got a draft of it in front of me from somebody, but okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll stay tuned for that one. Article 12. <coughs> Okay, so this does two things. It uh, establishes that cemeteries are now under the control of the Department of Public Works, um, where it's not clear that they are, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, 
they already do a tolerable amount in the, in the cemeteries right now. So this clarifies the the, uh, the lines of communication and and responsibility between the Hadley Cemetery Commission and the Department of Public Works uh, by a giving the Public Work Department of Public Works. Uh, Response, primary responsibility for the operation and management and care of the town cemeteries and to amend the original vote going all the way back to 1928 whereby the cemetery committee of five members was uh, created and given certain powers and duties and those powers and duties would be uh, amended to authorize the committee to advise and assist the DPW in the operation and management and care of the town cemeteries. I have a question on um, this. Uh, didn't we do not too long ago? I thought they had um, the, the same thing where they um, revolving account where the monies that come in right. for that pay for the maintenance. Mm -hmm. Right. So the revolving accounts handle the interment uh, for for the uh, uh, for the cemeteries. Uh, we do have a cemetery budget which kind of covers ground keeping. Okay. So that would shift into the DPW. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see an adjustment in the next budget this spring. Shouldn't be an adjustment. It should be the same amount. Um, but it would go under a different. Yeah, it, it's already within the uh, the division within the budget having to do with public works. It's just making more explicit that it's the DPW that's managing the cemeteries. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've worked a little bit, well, quite a lot with Alan. Mr. Alan Weinberg's done a lot of work on this um, in the committee. Um, they've done a great job. So I think we had discussions in the past. Um, this is going to land us kind of where we've been discussing in the past. The DPW will do the heavy lifting. Taking care of, like I said, the heavy lifting and stuff like that. And the committee will still be on board. We'll be together and they'll be handling the historical things and the, and the history and uh, stuff like that. So, just a, a quick overview of what we've been working on. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four to zero. Four, four, four zero. One, one, one exception. All right, so now Article 13 would be the sidewalk, snow, and ice general bylaw. We have a general bylaw of governing um, sidewalks covered by snow and ice, but that don't bylaw is old and doesn't cover all the angles that we needed to do. This is an issue that was generated by the Mass DOT installing sidewalks from South Maple Street all the way to the Amherst border. Uh, with the understanding that they will not be handling the uh, maintenance of those sidewalks during the winter time. That's their standard policy of expressed my concern that this is Who's understanding? We had them in here six times and told them we didn't want to maintain them. There's telephone poles and fire hydrants and guardrails in the middle of the sidewalks. The state does that stupid stuff and they should maintain it. And you're angry with us, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not angry with you. I'm making a point to the state. I want to make my voice heard because I've been listening well, we're to bad it. At too. <laughs> well, then get them in here, like I said before, and let them do it. something about Christ, it. They can't even take care of the roads that they're supposed to take care of. Never mind sidewalks. <clears throat> you know, I heard you over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, we, we wanted to rewrite this and make the um, business owners responsible for clearing their sidewalks. If they want the business of people that live at Green Leaves and places down there that walk to the malls uh, and have it accessible to them, then they should be responsible. So they clear the snow out of their parking lots. They can certainly clear the snow out of the sidewalks that are in front of, in front of their establishments. So that was the real reason of bringing this up, and I had mentioned it to uh, Marlo that there was a bylaw. I mentioned it to David, and I think that they should be responsible for doing that. And as it comes around, well, it seems like people that have sidewalks in front of their houses should be responsible for it also. No. Um, let me get finished here. Now, there are people that 
don't mow the lawns in front of there. There are a few there yeah. on Middle Street and West Street that don't feel the need to uh, mow the lawns that they don't feel are their responsibility. Well, you know, so be it. But it's still, um, I know that we've been doing it. We have set a precedent on West Street and Middle Street, and I know um, this has been a, a bone of contention with you, John, is that we do have a lot of elderly people that do live on uh, Middle Street and East Street. So we could make an amendment to the bylaw to um, exclude Middle Street and West Street as we have taken care of it. But I think I'd like to see residential nine. still maintained by the town and business or industrial sections maintained by the property owners. Well, yeah, it's like a town center to keep being maintained yes. by the town. Yes. Because there are a lot of people that yes. have disabilities that live at Golden Court yes. that use the bus for transportation. And if the town doesn't maintain those sidewalks, what are those people going to do? I, I got several calls just in the last two days, and I haven't even had a chance to talk to you about this, but um, uh, residential owners on Route 9 that are very concerned, especially elderly owners, mm -hmm. yeah. about icy snow banks thrown up there by the, by the snow plows that they're saying there's no way we can shovel through this stuff. So Well, and you know that every time that you we even plow it right. and take care of it, then the state highway comes yeah. through and they're throwing snow back on it again. Mm -hmm. So there have to be some limitations in, in not being able to find these people that cannot take care of the Route 9 area, but I think businesses have to be responsible. I, I agree. I think the businesses are already paying other people to, you know, they're not out there, not out there shoveling by hand like the elderly are, mm -hmm. maybe. So it's they've got a service in their crane. So, so, so is there can a I just commercial ask? district? Is that what commercial district would be responsible for their walks? Mm -hmm. The you know, our commercial district is commercial residential yeah. in a lot of places. So, because we're going to have the same deal when they redo. This other part of Route 9. I know Amherst maintains all of theirs still, but Northampton does not. Yeah. How far do you peep, DPW plow when they're going up? Do you go to Spruce Hill? Yes. Okay, Spruce so Hill and back. Spruce Hill and back. Yeah, check coolies on one side, that side works. Okay. Up so until the, to the end of uh, yeah. where Mary lives. Um, or just in front of the. Front just, of the coolies. Just in front of coolies old automotive shop. Okay, and then it ends. Yeah. So the reason this was brought up, right, is because of the cost and the burden on the DPW. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were surprised when you came to Hadley that we were doing this because it honestly isn't that typical in other municipalities. So I mean I'm I commercial properties to me are a no brainer, but I'm wondering if we should, I mean, I understand that some of the owners are elderly, um, but then. I'd like to see what Northampton still does too. They do, they find you. They find you. No, 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 but yeah. some they maintain and some they don't. And they pull out a bike path. Yeah. So for your last one, listen. they won't maintain the sidewalks in front of an elderly house, but they'll pull out a bike path. But a lot of, a lot of yeah. these folks are getting their driveways plowed, so. I mean, if you're if you're able to to clear your driveway, you're probably able to clear your sidewalk. Um, if you're hiring somebody to clear your driveway, you should be able to add do an add-on to have them clear the sidewalk as well. So what I'm wondering is, I know um, that maybe we should uh, put a put a moratorium, so to speak, or not institute the residential side of it. But I'd like it brought back up again and put people on notice that you've got two years to figure it out or something because. It, it, Again, this is a service that we're providing. Well, and I'm all for putting it out there and letting the voters decide at the town meeting whether. And a lot of, so a lot anyway. of these yeah. properties right. on Route Nine or Middle Street and West Street are student students. Uh, and, and but that's the thing. They're not always just the people that live there that are actual, yeah. you know, town residents. They are people that are more or less transient and mm -hmm. going to school and things like that. So, yeah. um, I think it would be. For us, a thing to look at to make sure that the uh, owners are responsible for making sure their sidewalks are cleared. And you know, we'd be responsible for all the town buildings because we're going yeah. to still have right. the library all the way down to Hopkins on Route 9, mm -hmm. Russell School, you know, yeah. so on and so mm -hmm. forth. 
So it's, I think it's something that we should probably leave on and let the voters go from there. And if we have to revise I'd like to it. research a little bit more and see, see yeah. what other towns are doing. And maybe have um, put some dollars and cents to it too, Marlo, if you have kind of like a per, per storm, you know, estimated number of hours it takes for the DPW and what that might cost. And is it just a sketch theory you plow it with? So you already have that piece yeah, of we equipment. Have a mini it's not a, we have a mini motor now. Okay, that's what you use. So it's already a piece of equipment we own for other purposes. It's not a special plow or anything along those right. lines. But we still have all the town buildings and the Route 9 property that we... Yeah. Mm -hmm. our, our property is <coughs> on there too, so... Would, um, I know you've got a whole lot of downtime right now. So. Right now, what's it roughly? Four or five hours? Do you think you four to five hours, and then we have to go back out another four to five hours, and they decide to <coughs> wing it 12 hours later. <coughs> and you get nowhere when you call over there. Once they do wing you it, you can't go through with the sidewalk machine anyway. You then you got to go put through a big lower up there and you do damage. So Could you uh, no, I, maybe check you, with Northampton and just see if they've had any liability issues? Try, you know, where the town has, people have come after the town when an individual didn't adhere to the... I mean, I've got a lot of background from my previous that community on that. Oh, that's that's I was a kid growing up over there. <clears throat> no, I, I know. Yeah, that's and not the issue. You said it, Trace. I mean, once the state comes through and rolls over four feet of ice, mm -hmm. how do you expect an elderly person to clean their sidewalk? They're shoveling two passes to get to current. But, but that's what I'm saying. I'm wondering how many people are actually shoveling their own sidewalk on Route 9 or whether they're hiring. A lot of them are. Yeah. Even where there's not sidewalks and we plow their driveways and we get some special signs swung at us. <laughs> it's true, I guess you would know. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. I've been there. They take their mailbox on top of it and you're really oh, in trouble, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. 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 The structure they built around the mailbox to protect it. Yeah. All right, so we'll leave it on for now and have more discussion before October meeting. Yeah, you know, one other little tidbit I want to throw out is over the years we've taken on um, quite a few more roads looking at the history here. Mm -hmm. um, the same amount of people, the same crew. So that extends clearing the roads, which is number one priority first, and then getting on our uh, municipal lots and school lots, and then sidewalks last. So the more subdivisions we take on as accepted roads takes longer for us to finish them up, retreat them if they need to be treated. So it keeps extending the sidewalk clearing out further and further to the point where we're almost not meeting the lot to begin with on our end either, mm -hmm. the 24 hour thing. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out looking at this whole thing uh, as this evolves and there's other subdivisions coming on, and potential more roads to be added to the department to maintain. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a domino effect on the other end of the storm and, and the guys run many more hours too okay. on top of it. So David White, like, you reminded me can you for a future meeting, we visit the issue of um, non-conforming, non-accepted roads and the town plowing those. Mm -hmm. so I think, think we have that. I think we I have did it. For. I think we did it all. I, think we're just uh, I have an update, I guess. Yeah. Is, is there still some left or not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, there's quite a few. There's, well, I, I need to make some adjustments in the, in the plowing too because there's some that potentially could be being done that there's some we shouldn't be doing. And there's some new developments too, so we should take, just take a quick look at it before we start. I was wondering, since um, it's a big concern about the elderly having to, to be out there, is there a way for them to come? I mean, because that's a small minority of the people. Right. Apply right? for relief. Apply for a relief type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just like they get relief for taxes, mm -hmm. there, you know, maybe the ones that get relief for taxes would automatically get the relief for this too. Yeah. I'd rather consider something like that than just make it a blanket. Yeah, I mean, we have we have a really difficult time, I think, um, throughout the time, and I think DPW and Mike, you can attest to that. To people even shoveling around their hydrants um, in the winter time, and not everybody does that, and it's really quite a detriment to. You know, if your house catches on fire, well, you're going to be up, you know, what kind of creek. So, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> again, we've asked people over and over on Facebook and everything if they would clear their fire hydrants, and it's not always done. And, you know, I, uh, it's going to be hard for us to enforce this bylaw with just shoveling sidewalks when we can't get the hydrants done. So, it's something that I would like to see more enforced, but it's, it's hard. 
and then the other problem is you've got people cleaning their fire hydrants and they're cleaning the fire hydrants off not cleaning around them so yeah. that's another costly issue to yeah. the DPW and uh, how many how many times a year do we have that three or four a year anyway no, not too. I wouldn't say too many times. It's more many. people sliding off the road and taking them. Off. No, no. <laughs> We've got plenty a, of that. A resident, a resident <laughs> plowing the snow summer. and plowing out their fire hydrant and cleaning the fire hydrant off. There's three or four a year. I haven't seen. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen any since I've been here. Maybe in the past, but. I mean, they're knocking the fire hydrants yeah. down. Yeah, I don't see that. Okay, so the last articles, 14, 15, 16, are, and 17, are planning board articles. Um, 14 is use of marijuana bylaw. We haven't really jumped any conclusion on that. Right, I, I don't know the results of last night's planning board meeting. So they were going to either adopt zoning bylaws for adult use marijuana or they're going to recommend that we extend the moratorium. Our moratorium lasts until November 30th of this year and we would have to extend it to June or July of next year in order to catch the next town meeting. To watch the waiting here. Yeah, as soon as I, I've got a call to Jim Maximowski on this one. Does that take the same um, majority? the moratorium as the new bylaw? Well, I'm a little confused on this because the Attorney General said that you don't need a town meeting vote to extend the mor moratorium, and I've never heard of that. Um, so I'd need some legal uh, guidance on that one. My, <coughs> my concern, and in fact, I'll be meeting with people tomorrow morning uh, that we've seen uh, incidents where people are uh, using adult uh, marijuana charging a fee for that sort of like as a private party but the public is invited and social media is used so we're already seeing activity in Hadley where adult use marijuana is involved so I'll be meeting with them about zoning compliance so where's the state with their bylaws that's still old too no they finished their bylaws I thought they finished them. did they finish they finished they their bylaws they Everything legal is in effect. The testing facility, I think they had finally yeah. approved. Oh, okay. Um, Just to be clear for people that are watching, though, you're talking more along the lines of adult use marijuana that's yes. basically in a, but in a commercial setting that's happening. That yes. We but are yeah. not but licensing it, at this point. So we, that's what right. I was addressing. We might not be licensing any facilities, but not having any laws, bylaws, puts us at risk for other things. <laughs> but right. No, but there's I'm, no law against doing certain things then in town. Well, yeah, what I'm saying is what David's referring to is there's some commercial activities with adult use marijuana happening possibly in town now. That's what he's working on. Not, not, yeah. not stopping individual recreational adult use marijuana. So. Yeah. Right, so we're supposed to be getting 3% of whatever the sales are. That's obviously not happening. There's obviously problems with the IRS in that kind of a situation. I mean, it gets, gets very sticky very quickly. Yeah. I just want to be clear for people that are watching that we're not That's trying right. to shut down individual no, no. use by state law. It's more of a commercial That's use. why we don't need a moratorium. We need to pass some kind of law and start collecting the money. <laughs> yeah. And there's outlines for the laws already yeah. out there that we just yes. have to adopt. Yes. I don't think we have to be perfect right off the bat, but adopt something rather than nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In, in other news, the Board of Health has adopted or has finished their work on the health regulations concerning adult use marijuana. Okay. That's under legal review and they should be uh, uh, taken to public hearing in the next week or so in order to make those formally adopted. So the Board of Health is working very well in putting this together in collaboration with the Hadley Police Department so that they're involved. Uh, are, at some point are we going to get a copy of that to look over? Because I hope so. We can probably adopt somewhat what they got there. You know, and I'm sure Planning Board will be able to use well, that information also. I think as soon as it comes also. back from legal, we yeah. have a chance to look at it. <coughs> and the last one was the 
roofs reserved for planning board. Um, so there was wanted to be a change in the roof in the center district overlay. Yeah, the only thing is that the, the only change there is that the uh, current bylaw uh, specifies you should have a shingle like appearance to the roof, and mm -hmm. this, this modification takes away any kind of architectural appearance language. Mm -hmm. It has to conform to certain <coughs> pitch and slope, but uh, how it looks is up to the town. This allows for standing seam to be used. It would allow for standing seam to be used. Does the planning board have to have a hearing on this before yes, they it can do. be adopted? Do yes, they have they that do. scheduled? They, uh, they have to have that. Oh, they have to have it November November on the 17th. It, it, 18th. It, 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 it's for the 18th right now? Yeah. It's scheduled? I talked to Jim Mike Zamowski and their intention was to schedule things again. I don't know what happened in last night's meeting. So. And it would also be the same if there was going to be any discussion on changing the parking requirements. That would also be subject to a public hearing. Yep. That's the last one on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So reserved for planning board parking. Right. And see for municipal projects if they exist from parking. Right, they've, they've been clear that they're not intending to really work on that. Um, if someone wanted to present it to them, they'd consider it. But the, it, they're the only ones who can schedule a public hearing on it, mm -hmm. right? So we need we would need them to help us with that. If right. That were to be presented at town meeting. So right now I propose that municipal parking would be exempt from the uh, from the requirements for parking dimensions. Uh, that may be too blunt of an instrument for the town, but given the lack of time to work on this, I haven't refined it. Right, I mean there. Yeah. But, but based well, on our timeline here, we're kind of getting down to the wire as far as getting this on the board for mm -hmm. yeah. this town meeting. So, yeah. Just we need a new member. Yes, please. We need another new member for finance committee. So anybody out there with an interest in serving on the finance committee would be Who are the current greatly members? appreciated. Terry Ken. Ushko has resigned. Kathy Zaturka is the remaining member. Is Kathy? Uh, that's what I was wondering. Is Kathy still active? Or? I haven't. I haven't talked to her. Uh, okay. So. So how many do you need? Two. Two. We need two people for two. finance committee, please. Two people and possibly. Be because Gabriel is, uh, is off to school. Is off to school. And Terry is here. And Terry so. resigned. Okay. Yes. Can you so tell everybody when you meet and how often you meet? So if they're interested. Uh, it's open. Okay. So right now, because we haven't really, we haven't been able to meet because we haven't been able to get a quorum. Okay. So we were meeting at one point, um, the first and the third Thursday. Um, of the month, but it's that's at the time that was good for the five people. So we're very open to when we meet. We like to meet at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, or you know, and then there's the tri board meetings. So it depends. Obviously, we meet quite often right before uh, budget. Um, there's quite a few meetings before the um, when we're planning the budget, but during the summer, it's, it's quiet. When is the busiest time? Like okay. month, like like. Oh, so I'd say what is it? Uh, Mar <coughs> March, March, April. Yeah. This isn't too bad with just the special town meeting. So no, <coughs> no. But you need to get somebody in here now to see what's going on. I mean, so right now, I mean, we're gonna need to get the. Um, we we definitely need to get the articles voted on, and I haven't been able to pull together a quorum at this point. Okay. Is there anything I can do to help? together that core uh -oh. right oh, okay. so it's just it's the two of us right now I haven't been able to get a hold of Kathy so if you end up talking to her um, I tried um, you have a contact info and everything I do okay um, but maybe she's been away I'm not sure and Brian's aware yeah work on that mm -hmm. all right thank you that ends our tri board meeting We'll go into our consent agenda.
We have uh, minutes from June 6, 2018. Warrants AP 1859, AP 1908, AP 1908 S, AP 1909, AP 1909-S, PR 1907, and PR 1908. We have an appointment of uh, David J. Phil Sr. to the uh, Master uh, Building Committee. Uh, determination of Consent Veterans Services Agreement, and that's with KP Law, so that's uh, I have that here for us to sign. We have a one-day liquor license, top of the campus, football games, New York Stadium, 922, uh, Performance Center, Commonwealth Club Tent. Um, the fire chief and the police are aware of it. They have not signed off on it yet, but they have no problem with it. We have approval of Woodstock Fund transfer of funds uh, for Zaturka Park, and that entails um, they ran into a little bit of a snafu out there with the stump dump, which uh, I think we all knew was out there. I know my son played on it with Little League, and I'm sure you did too, David. Yep. Uh, there are many children that yeah, I put their hole the into a hole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So what, what might have been the nature of what they ran into? Uh, they just there were just holes that cropped up in the outfield when they were out there catching. Oh no, I, I'm aware. Oh, what the, kids played there too. But yeah. I mean, what <coughs> the, the, the problem was that they found a stump dump where they didn't expect to find a stump dump. They I thought we thought the whole thing was a stump dump. No, it was supposed to be. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> apparently, apparently there were more stumps there than they expected. Oh, oh my gosh. So they they dug down and were surprised. Because they didn't expect to find them. What were you saying about Pandora's box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, a woody one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's for thousand dollars, and that's co-administered by the Park and Rec Commission and the Select Board. And that money is being taken from the Woodchuck Fund. Mm -hmm. Right. Just people there. Uh, an MOU with the Town of Hadley and the Hadley Public Works employees. We now have uh, an agreement with them. Any, anyone want to make a motion? Make a, I was going to say, I'll make a motion to approve, but I'd like to pull out the municipal building committee. Second. Or just abstain from it. Yeah, either one. Still abstain? Yeah, I'll abstain. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Yeah, abstain from the DPW contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aye. I except for the municipal building. Okay. I except for DPW. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank I you. I for all. <laughs> Can I make a request? Sure. Of um, Mr. Nixon and the chair. It just sparked my um, my thought process when I was looking at the determination for the consent and uh, KP law. Um, can we put our legal service contract on the agenda this fall? When does that expire? It's open-ended. It's open-ended. It's open-ended. I mean, in the past, we've had them come in and talk about the services they provide. I don't know. Well, I think we should just talk about it and then decide that if we could do that another night. I appreciate that. Okay. Probably the 22nd. Okay, um, I can't do the public hearing until 7.30, so I guess we'll move on. David, you'll get a chance to do your account administrator report tonight. Okay. So, um, I guess the biggest thing is our discussion with Berkshire Gas Company this morning. Mm -hmm. um, you going to open up the lines? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful uh, thinking that says it down the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah so, um, so as everybody knows that we've had a gas moratorium that was been imposed for about two years now, and there was some it's longer. 
so some uh, possibility of that that uh, gas moratorium would be lifted. The first possibility was uh, crew uh, the building of a new line, which we all know where that went, which was nowhere. Um, there was an exploration of two different uh, um, capital improvements by Berkshire Gas Company, one of which was a parallel line to serve the main trunk, and the other one was to expand the LNG facility to be able to mechanically inject the gas into the lines. Berkshire Gas Company has made the determination that both of those projects are cost prohibitive and that at this point they uh, remain hopeful but have no specific idea as to how to uh, add gas capacity to the lines. And so the moratorium, rather than being uh, something that we could expect to see lifted with effort in the next few years, it's going to continue indefinitely. Uh, this obviously has a profound influence on our economic development for the region. There are eight communities that are uh, affected from Greenfield and Montague down to Amherst, Hadley, and Hatfield. Uh, there are other communities that are serviced by other com uh, gas companies that either have a gas moratorium in place or they're beginning to reach that capacity where a moratorium would be necessary. So this is a larger than Berkshire Gas Company issue and larger than the region issue. So that is disappointing news. There's going to be an uh, advertisement taken out in the Daily Hampshire Gazette uh, that walks. Was there any, did you ask the question or find out if there was any reason why they're not uh, letting the existing customers that have vacant properties connect to the gas, you know, uh, like a portion of the mall mm -hmm. went abandoned and they now have a portion of the mall back instated and they can't they use the gas. They said that if they have a quota for the mall, let's say, so if one, say three store, I don't know how to put this, but if they have a quota for that, so if one store closes and another one opens near there, that one gets the gas. But if that store that closes reopens with another business, then there's a chance that quota is already filled for the entire property. And the mall's already repurposed all of the BTUs yeah. that yeah. were allocated. Well, uh, not just that, I mean, individual businesses too, you know. Yeah. We, we have ran into that a couple <coughs> of times already. And I don't have to ask the fire chief because I already know that, that the uh, the problem with propane bottles and natural gas, which two both do go into the same building at the same time, creates a major problem, major headache for fire service, doesn't it, Chief? Well, they, the... Uh, Do we have any in town now? Yeah, but there's a whole new process now. So the code was changed to allow dual fuel. So there's a whole process that the company has to get permission from the gas company, from the fire chief, from the plumbing inspector before it can happen. And there's substantial labeling requirements that really clarifies that it's dual fuel on site, where shutoffs are, propane versus natural gas. So the bottom line, the punchline was they have two possible solutions that will be in the newspaper article or the advertisement or whatever you want to call it. Um, both of them at a minimum are $100 million capital investments and they don't have enough customer base to even come close to funding that. So they have a, a major economic issue. Um, so, I mean, the, the takeaway was unless they get relief from elsewhere and there is no elsewhere, even the parent company, that would be a throwaway. I mean, they're, they're not adding customers, they're just trying to sustain a small base. So, State's um, not gonna get back and they, the state didn't even know that there was a moratorium. Right. But anyway, they did, but then not the person they talked to. So um, the bottom line is we need to resolve ourselves and make sure our residents and our businesses understand that there's no light and shining, shining armor arriving. We've been saying 2020, we thought we'd have relief. We're not going to have any. So on to other energy sources, whatever those might be. Okay, next. The good news is that Hadley uh, 
produces more renewable energy than any other town in the county, so we're, we're no slackers in terms of energy production. We can continue investing. But it doesn't in give them gas for cooking, no matter how much yeah. other, uh, you know, it doesn't help the restaurants out. So, you know, right. you know we have a lot of electricity and all of that stuff, but the bottom line is it, it's, it, you know, you can't, you need gas in some, some restaurants, so that's why they have to go the propane. So. Right, so that's something we talked about. It's very hard to bake a pizza with electricity. Mm -hmm. You need something a little done. bit more. But anyway. David, okay. we should send that to, just going, I mean, the handout they gave us, we should send that to the planning board. Yep. So that they, because they're probably yeah. saying to people, oh, maybe, you know, so that they know. Yeah. Sounds good. They weren't there for anybody. No. So in other news, uh, MS4 stormwater permit, um, we just signed the notice of intent uh, and we sent that off that fulfills our obligations for the fiscal year for complying with the new five-year permit. When we start developing the uh, FI20 budget, we'll have to take into account a whole bunch of operational uh, uh, operational uh, uh, demands that are going to cost us money. There's no two ways about it. We have raised the money for this project already, but uh, it's going to be a lot of effort and it should be something that we'll have to dig in on June 1st. I had a conversation with uh, Eversource having to do with the pedestrian crossing on, in front, on Route 9 in front of the courthouse. Um, they're still having a problem hooking the grid up to the project. Um, and so uh, I expressed my concern that we've, we have more pedestrians now that the students have returned, schools are in session, and that uh, we need to get this project up and going. Did you want to interject here, David, that uh, Route 9 cross walk thing? We, it's not basically on the agenda, but I know you wanted to talk about it tonight. Yeah. Um, I guess it was the spring we voted on putting back up the flashing lights um, on Route 9 in addition to the new Hawk system. But uh, Marlo, do you want to talk about what you heard from the state as far as we're going to put it up and they're going to tear it back down and not put it back up again uh, when they redo to Route 9? Yeah, I think um, we, we discussed uh, this at an earlier board meeting of potentially moving the one near the Legion this way, maybe on this side of the lights closer to the school. <clears throat> the problem we have down through that whole north side tree belt is you got a orange gas main running down the middle of the tree belt. There's nowhere to put it. Um, and also going uh, east of the lights here also there's a problem. So I went back to in the process of uh, filing a permit to uh, put these things in, replace the existing one in front of the superintendent's office and then the, the westbound one. <clears throat> I received an email back from uh, Bao Lang at the Mass DOT stating that that's fine, you can put it there, you can put that in the permit. Uh, but he informed me that as part of the plan, when they expand Route 9 out here, they're going to remove it and stack it. In other words, they're going to remove it, return it to our yard, and not allow it to go back in there um, by the Legion. So <clears throat> I thought it was appropriate to bring it back to the board's attention um, to help make me a decision on where to go with this. We're in the process of procuring it. Uh, we can put the one in down by the superintendent's office, but we're coming up at this point kind of a blank on the one coming westbound. And that was what, 13,000? For two, yeah. Uh, the board needs to send a letter to the state and tell them we want it there. We've already approved it, and we have good reason to. The police chief had a praise for it, but I believe the fire chief was here that night. We had that discussion, and the citizens want them there. Well, that's fine if we can get it there. I just don't want to spend the money on it if they're going to tear it down. Well, we need to write a letter and to the state and tell them they will be putting it back there. I'll well, expect the draft of a desk on the Well, that's, you know. Why are you the chairman? <laughs> I mean. I meant to ask you that anyway. That's, I'm just making a comment. I mean, that's fine, John. I, I completely understand how you feel and what you're talking about. But unfortunately, it's the state's property. If they say it's coming out and they don't want to put it back in. This is why we're having the discussion, because that's basically, I've been going around and around with this particular subject more than once, trying to get 
get this item to be a mainstay, and it sounds to me it's not going to be a mainstay. So, so we can proceed with that one by the superintendent's office, right? And that's not going to be torn down. Is that correct? Or yes, because okay. that section of Route Nine's been already done. Okay. I would have to remove the sign that they put in front of the old one, take the actual signage off, and put it on the flashing light. Sure. You can't have a school zone. It's not a 20 mile an hour because it doesn't fit the requirements with the distance of the crosswalks uh, from the school. Um, and that was part of his answer to me um, via email when we were discussing both of them. Uh, I can proceed with the one. Um, it changes one at a time, changes the procurement also. So, um, so does it have to go on the Legion zone or could we put it near the good one? That's town property that we could permanently have it on? If you put it on the back side of the walk, it's gonna, it, it's off too far off the road for it to be. They don't make yeah. a burn out over the sidewalk? The other thing that I'd be really nervous about is you uh, put an light, light and sign pollution. If you put a flashing light right next to the red, green, and yellow light out here, mm -hmm. it's gonna cause confusion. Uh, they just hung a beam all the way across four lanes. We can't put a little five foot extension out on that and well, I think we I think we need to draft a letter and we need to and, get and, to the state from the and board talk to them and you know I, I would put them both them in and tell them they're going to relocate it well, it's been existing for and, and I'm okay years now I'm okay with you sending a letter and demanding that from them but I just don't want to spend seven grand or six grand in the meantime I can't yeah. say no to that exactly so, uh, so let's let's get a, a letter off to them ASAP and see where they are with that and say we want one. And that, so would that just that go side. to our um, district two yeah, office? District two. I, mean, I have contact information and yeah. everything for David. I, I, go I mean, my, my other question is do we want to proceed with the one? <laughs> right pull a permit door. for the one down there, get it done, get it installed. Because, like I said, the, the procurement changes, it, it drops you below the threshold. Three quotes, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And nice do one, it. we're looking at one for six or seven thousand dollars. The procurement that. changes. Yeah. I mean, the police chief was, I think, was in favor of it, and yeah. this board was, so I yeah. say we go. And, and please don't take me wrong, I'm not opposed to these things. Yeah. I'm just trying to present the information as I'm running into these brick walls. You're on for safety. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll do that then. All right, next. So if you're if you're just doing one for six or seven thousand dollars, you're below the ten thousand dollar threshold. Right. We don't need to go through the procurement. You could just use uh, best business sense to get uh, right. three, three quotes. We just business. look online. You don't even have to talk yeah. to anybody. Yeah. Okay. So we can move move that one anyway. So we got to disassemble the other one. It's been removed. The electrical's been removed. I was gonna say power company takes the power out of here finally. <laughs> the, the yeah yeah we already did that. The um the other thing too is the existing base there we may be able to use the same hole for the simple reason is that now bases that are required by code are, are larger square they may go you know in other words make the hole a little bigger and we could drop it right in there in the same spot. Uh, I gotta take another look at that, but I, I mean that'll be a fairly easy one to take care of. Okay, route nine widening. Route 9 widening, the update there is that Marlowe submitted a grant for $700,000 with Massworks in order to do the sewer line work there. So we prioritize that as the number one uh, project uh, to receive legislative support, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, the fire substation, we've moved from phase one environmental review to phase two because of the presence of, historical presence of tobacco on that, on that land. The committee is working and designs are being developed at this point. The senior center and library updates, we'll have more discussion later in tonight's meeting, but we have a planning board meeting coming up on September 11th. That's an important meeting to attend. How about the um, fire substation we met? We did. We're meeting again next Monday night. Uh, we moved to have with. We're going to be pushing that back. We're pushing the public meeting and our next meeting back further. Okay. So nothing next Monday. As of right now, That's most likely not. Okay. So we just talked about so the plans with our our building committee that night and. Yeah, we had a follow-up meeting on a couple of things, but yeah, it's moving forward. We'll move forward, so just wait for the typography to get done. 
is the Turka Park. We talked uh, briefly about that. That project is underway. We expect it to be completed in October. Uh, we took care of the, uh, the exploratory work with the $1,000 uh, transfer from the Woodchuck Nominee Trust. DPW fire alarm system, that project is substantially complete. And the fire alarm uh, alarm system, the town hall fire alarm system is going on right now. We'll keep a town hall open during the installation work. North Hadley Village Hall sale, we have a walkthrough scheduled for Friday at 10 a.m. That walkthrough starts here in town hall with a review of documents. Then we'll take anybody who wants to to the site. Do you have anybody expressing interest in that at this point? At this point, I haven't heard anything concrete. Uh, we did send out as much as information to as many local commercial real estate brokers as we could. Have you heard anything? We had two requests for the documents, and they were from... Um, Advertising? Yeah, their project dog is what the construction equivalent is. They take your RFPs and then broadcast them out there. Mm -hmm. So nobody locally, but two companies did take it and send it out. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's been the only movement on it. Yeah. All right, so we just got a uh, draft uh, unit directional water flushing plan, which is under internal review. This is something that we will schedule for spring 2019. We have a special town meeting coming up on the 18th of October. Uh, OSHA, I will be receiving training tomorrow with the Small Town Administrators of Massachusetts, and I'll be bringing that information back. That's something we need to comply with by February 1st, 2019. Um, the elementary school HVAC uh, project, uh, we had a very nice article on the Daily Hampshire Gazette about that. I don't think the Gazette did enough justice in giving credit to Superintendent Ann McKenzie and business manager Chris Desjardins, both of whom did a lot of heavy lifting to get that HVAC project up and going by the first day of school. We have a DPW director search that, uh, you know, sorry to see you go, and we'll talk about that on your agenda tonight. And just going through this. We have the American Legion chicken to go on September 16th, Fire Association barbecue on September 21st, public forum and a special town meeting on October 11th, and then the special town meeting itself on October 18th. Okay. Just touching on the highlights, if anybody has any questions or comments, happy to talk about them. September 23rd. <coughs> 22nd, Friday. It's a Friday? <laughs> What's well, a change? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's on your sign. That's what's on the sign. Uh, so, the so you know what my question's going to be? Did we get a check yet for the levy? <laughs> no, we did not, Bob. We got a query from the insurance company asking for more information. We got two queries from the insurance company asking for more information. Oh, their progress. And we have responded to both those queries. Okay, we still early for the public hearing. We'll jump to um, DPW Director Search and Hiring. And we're in the process of doing that. Their DPW job announcement. We made that announcement at last uh, our last select board meeting. And again, we're very sorry to see Marla go, but understand. Some things have their priorities, and you have to do what you have to do. So I hope we can find somebody that can fill his shoes. Um, so we have posted it in several different areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, what and is some of those corrections that those should be should have been made by now? Yes. Okay. If not, let me know. Well, the position announcement doesn't some of the things that the other sites did. The salary range and right, the, right. so those, that's been corrected. Should be at this point, yeah. We contacted them and told them to do 
make those changes. So I'll double check that tomorrow morning. So what's the salary range were you were using? So it was a um, one of these sites had a salary range which was a required field. We I just took Marlowe's salary and used that as the range. But I think as a board though, weren't we aiming for Yeah, we were gonna discuss it. Yeah. So I mean what's our kind of our I guess our targets that way people that are applying know what they're getting into or not getting into and depends on the credentials and the qualifications. Yeah. It should be like everybody else. Yeah, but it's still yeah, a so range. Range. Yeah. I mean so do we say eighty to a hundred? <coughs> do we say you know seventy five to hundred twenty five? I mean it's a pretty broad range. So I mean so what would we Okay. Gonna have an interview committee again or yeah, that was the thing that we we're gonna talk about tonight is to set up a interview committee after we received applicants. Um certainly we need to do that. Seventy to hundred, something along that range kinda of covers the range of qualifications pretty well. Right. So, so anybody wanna make a motion if that would be what we we're looking for. Or do you wanna just insert that in there? Seventy to hundred. Commensurate with experience. Yeah. Experience and qualification. So what well, what I would find helpful is if we had a process, we don't need to decide it tonight. But if we had a process, how do you want we're gonna get uh, resumes in by October first. Mm -hmm. How do you want it to do this? Do you want a committee? Do you want the We committee? want to set up a committee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first like we did the last time. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see that. Yeah. So how do we want to um, what will be the makeup of the committee? I'd like to be on the committee as a liaison for the department. So last time we had two select board, we had a community member, we had uh, representation actually from the department. Each department. Which we, you know we could talk about. We we tried to do it so there was one from each division, but that was also before the reorganization of the department. So you might want to rethink that, but still, you know. Um, oh, we should still have there there specific needs for each <coughs> division. I think that was it. Well, were there two community? I think so. Originally, there was one from another community of retired DPW. That's what it was. That's what it was. We had the fellow from Long Meadow. Yeah, that's right. Right. We had an um, external DPW. Mm -hmm. That would be fine, also. Yeah. I'm happy to do it again or not. So if somebody else really wants to do it, John could. If you have the time and you want to do it, I'm all for you doing it. <laughs> That's fine. Fine with me if you want to do it. Did a good job the last time, so we'll trust you again this time. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Um, Hank Barstow did express an interest in participating. Okay. Just for, for what that's worth, you know, if people are comfortable with him, otherwise we could toss it out. Okay. You good with him? Yeah. Okay. So one community member that we're going to look for and maybe... Uh, well, Hank would be the community member. Right. And then we would look for somebody else with a DPW experience. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was just going to say maybe Mr. Oh, Mori, a, a citizen and DPW director up in Airmission, might be interested <laughs> if he's watching. Did you suggest something? Oh no, I mean, no. if I can help in any way, also. Okay. Oh well, well, that's a very good point. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just realizing. Yeah, um, Marlo had commented earlier that because. He's going somewhere, but he's not going anywhere. He's still relatively local. That and he has a vested interest in seeing a lot of the work that he started and finished. That um, you, you said that you would offer to be on the committee if we or have. offer any assistance that I, 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 yeah. I can, uh, I'm fine with that. I don't know. If yeah, I mean, I would make five. I'm kind of great. That's two, what I got. Three, okay. four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think there was, yeah, I think there was five. Who else? Five is Hank. Mr. Grader? Mm, no, Mr. Grader was not. No, Sharon was on. Sharon was on. Was it Gary Bartoni? Gary, 
Sharon, Gary, and Jerry. Someone from the department. Right. So would it make any sense to have Sharon and or and two Kelly people from the DPW? So somebody from wastewater and somebody from water. DPW. I think Sharon was water. from water. Okay. And Gary was from highway. And I was from wastewater. Sharon has a good grasp on the administrative stuff, so maybe her on there as the water rep and someone that understands kind of the administrative. Well, that would be Marla there, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. actually, that might be good. That would, that would just keep it to the five. Okay. If she's willing to do that. Yeah, if she's willing to do that. So is that the makeup of the committee then? All, all in favor? Motion? No. Yes. You want me to make a motion? I make a motion that our DPW director search committee include David, Molly, Hank Barstow, Marlo, and Sharon in the DPW department. Second. Okay. Kilford Boring. Oh, do we want to put him on there? Well, no, I think we're Marlo. saying Marlo. Okay. Marlo's the okay. DPW director. I think if he's interested, he should be asked first. Well, we could ask him. Well, the only, the only concern I have is sometimes we have competing interests with our. <laughs> <laughs> you bring towns. I mean, I'm fine with Guilford. He was sitting on the committee before, but you know. Do you want me to say with the option of Guilford? Sure. Yeah. If he's willing. How about yeah? Propose a is yeah. a, is a uh, sure alternate. Alternate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Guilford. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Has he expressed interest, or are we just assuming that he's interested? Well, we just asked yeah, him. Yeah. 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 You can blame me for his wife threw it out there. He's, he's, he's going to blame me. He's going to send an out on the calendar. Let me check my phone. <laughs> I, you know, my phone isn't ringing yet. So. Okay, so that makes up the committee. We'll wait for the applications to come in and go from there. Thank you. Let's hear a vote. Mm -hmm. That was all in favor? Aye. 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 Hope stay. All right. Well, we're close. Can we go ahead with this public hearing? Yes, because we already took care of this traffic beacon on the time. We, we did that. Uh, so the other thing was... Trustee, library trustee. Library trustee, we yeah, do that quick. Two announcements. And we have um, received a letter from uh, Joanne Canesti in regards to Karen Curley. Uh, resigning, and I think that we did talk about it in our last meeting, though, didn't we? Okay. Maybe we have well, to go through a formal official process. Official process of replacing her. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I think we had that Karen Curley had been a long time trustee of the Goodwin Memorial Library, and effective August 1st, um, she and her family are moving out of town and will no longer be served as a trustee. Um, and we agree with Joanne that we are very grateful for um, Karen's uh, service that she's given to us over the years with the library. She's been very instrumental in getting things done over there. So we certainly do appreciate all her hard work and thank her for her hard work. Appreciate it. Uh, she's going to be missed. She's going to be missed for sure. And we will now start that process of filling. Right, so if anybody has in, uh, an interest or make an announcement for a two-week period that position that letters of interest will be accepted to the library, is it? Yes. To, to the library. Okay. And then we'll, we'll meet with the library trustees and the select board on the 19th in order to um, <laughs> take a formal vote. that on our uh, TV station. That would be nice for the library trustee. Do you want me to email you an announcement? That would be great. So now can we take that? Yeah. That would okay. be, that'd be fine. That. Thank you so much. Okay. Just one other announcement. I'm going to submit an application to the Commonwealth Compact for the IT. Uh, and I need a uh, formal vote of the board to submit that uh, <laughs> application. I'm going to be submitting it on Tuesday. Do you have the content for the application? I am s assembling as much as I can at this point. So, But it's going to be due next week. And I just want to get the permission, the formal permission from the board to submit the application. 
This is for the IT. Uh, for the so IT grant. Grant. We meet the twelfth, right? Yeah. yeah. We've used this grant in the past. We received fifty thousand dollars for the uh, missions system for the seven pump stations. So grants up to two hundred thousand dollars are possible, but a hundred thousand to fifty thousand are much more likely. So when does it have to be? It has to be in by the fifteenth of September, and I will be in Maryland at that point. So I okay. want to submit it by. Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Okay. But the only problem is we don't know what you're asking for yet. Right. I mean, I know you're asking for IT stuff, <laughs> but we, we talked about a lot of different We've talked projects. About a lot I'm of sure you've had conversations so with other people. I've talked to the library. They're interested in AV equipment for their new building. That's a $12,000 request. Talk to the collector's office about a new VADAR integrated uh, tax billing and collection system. That would be $22,000 if I can remember the amount correctly. There is an unknown amount of money that we could be using for body cams and dash cams for the police department. This is something that they want to do. Um, there is a request from the uh, assessor's office for. $20,000 for uh, Vision 8. Uh, so I have a number of things that I'm trying to assemble into an attractive package. The Com Commonwealth Compact will not fund things that they deem that we should be funding ourselves. So some of these requests are not going to be uh, funded or even presented for funding. But the things that excite them that they think are interesting much more likely to receive funding. You and I talked about a project over in Northampton having to do with integrated permitting. Um, integrated permitting and also um, content management, yeah. shared shared and indexed documents so that people could... Modern, modern things that everybody else has had over years and years. Yeah, so and, uh, that's why I'm just wondering what you're... I'm trying to put it all together in one big tasty stew. So, I mean... Just because we put the application, we don't have to accept these funds if, they, if we decide that a project is not something we want to pursue down the road. That's correct. Or not sustainable. Right. 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 But it's foolish not to submit something. Yeah, right? yeah absolutely. I mean, it's money out there, so you're certainly going to submit something for right. our, yeah. our projects that people, their wish list. So you know, we want to take that into consideration. Maybe, David, you could get your list ready together. and Could you run it by Molly just mm -hmm. to... <laughs> well, I just want to know where the time goes. Because the thing I don't care it. what he goes for. As long as he goes for money that people have asked for requests for things, I think that's really important. And, you know, and incorporating some of the thoughts that you had also. So, you know, if you wouldn't mind if he would pull it together and then show it to you. Would yeah, that I, think yeah, one I think it's more like the, how it integrates into our overall strategic plan. I mean, those mm -hmm. are the things we want to prioritize. So, so well, certainly I, the things that he just mentioned now are, are, you know, things that we've talked about that are... So I'll make a motion to authorize the town administrator to apply for the grant um, as long as he runs it by Molly first to make sure that it's in line with the strategic plans for the town and the IT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, good. That sounds Second. Good. good for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Here's a stack of <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that intelligent, no, but if he, if he just yeah. can show you what he's applying for, then I think we all agree with it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, so, along that line, I want to add grant election season. $700,000 grant for the sewer election season. We need to contact whatever representative we have mm -hmm. and the governor's office because the lieutenant governor came in to visit us and we <coughs> spoke with her and she said she would take anything under consideration. And mm -hmm. these are some issues that we need to consider with, with the governor's office. Mm -hmm. And I think the board needs to get a letter to the governor's office or make a phone call to them and let them know that we've, we've come up with these things and we're well, how, really about if, how about if we draft a letter before next week's meeting and, yeah. and all of us could sign it yes 
Did probably you, to did the, you do that? Probably to the, the governor's office, yeah, with, with, with these mm -hmm. specific. Did you, Marlo, did you put those other two grants in? Yes. Okay, so there's three grants from DPW. Mm -hmm. You got? There's a fourth one that's the uh, the water grant over at uh, Campus Plaza. Okay. Um, so we could put those in? That's this IT grant and um, just put them all in a letter and get it off to the governor's office. Now yeah. we got two months. There's also the AD grant that's due on October 1st that we're going to start working on right after you finish this one. Right. So she'll general draft the, the letter, we'll all sign it next yes. week so we can go out. Yeah, the next application but will be The January lieutenant first. governor was, was really open mm -hmm. to, to the discussion that we had, and she, you know, she did visit every town, and, and she did listen to all the complaints and the criticisms, but they've done a good job up until this point. And, See what else they can get done for us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Out of the three, so, I did I did prioritize that. Thinking of that meeting I have. We have a 7:30 public hearing. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> sorry. We'll get back. We'll get back. All right. As long as we just add them all in and sign. Yeah. All right. We're good. Okay. All right. We're good. Okay. Uh, so 7:30 public hearing is revocation of the tap room general on premises all alcohol license um, this has come to our attention that there has been uh, delinquent in uh, paying the um, infrastructure tax that we um, had imposed on them we had made a deal with somebody to pay in a timely fashion and that hasn't happened so David do you want to Yeah, so um, Town of Hadley passed a bylaw that um, um, says basically that in case of non-payment of any municipal charge, a business could be held accountable by a public hearing during which uh, after finding a fact you can uh, uh, revoke, suspend, deny, or a permit. Uh, under Mass General Law. We have two permits that are available for, uh, for the tap room. One is the liquor license and the other one is the entertainment license. The tap room was assessed a sewer impact fee. In negotiations we came up with a payment schedule. The first payment of $2,000 was paid. There are outstanding um, charges that have not been paid. We had a sit-down meeting with Mr. Joe Eckerly and his partner, um, and we're not able to come to any kind of agreement as to payment, responsibility for that payment, and so now it gets kicked up to the select board uh, level. There's an outstanding balance of $8,000 seven hundred sixty dollars and seventy eight cents um, payment of the fee will cancel the hearing uh, Jennifer we have not received payment okay so at this point I'll turn it over to the board okay um, first we have Joe Joe and do you have anything that you would like to say about this yeah yeah so I thought I'd start off with a little bit of, of history for those of you who weren't involved at the very beginning of the of the tap room um, it was 16 months ago we like, came in front of the, the planning board um, met with the fire chief met with the police chief met with the board of health the director met with everybody Jennifer spent a lot of time with Jennifer to to go to, to get my permit for my liquor like my state liquor license and subsequently my local liquor license um, so for the first five months from April through August, everything, no problems. Uh, met all the goals, made, paid all the permits, did everything that we were supposed to do. And 12 days, well actually, I sat in front of this, this uh, committee as well, asking for uh, a proration of my 2017 license, which you guys so graciously granted me. Um, that was just the last couple months um, of, of the year. And I paid my $3,600 liquor license fee for the beginning of 2018. Um, so that was all great. 12 days before my opening, um, 12 days after I spent $50,000 on, on creating this business, um, I was told I can't get my liquor license because the landlord has not paid a final, a final fee. So 
Just like I did when Jennifer told me the landlord didn't pay the taxes, I called the landlord and said, hey, you need to go down to town hall, fix this issue. I've got a business I'm starting to open and I need my liquor license. So the landlord did come down here to talk about the sewer impact fee. And about three hours later, he came to my establishment and told me that it was my fee. And I said, how can this be my fee? I, I didn't connect to a sewer, this is not my building, I'm just leasing a space. So I, was, I had no other recourse. David talked to me about signing an agreement where I could make payments, so I did pay $2,000. Um, but my liquor license was held over my head, and under duress, I signed an agreement because I had $50,000 on the line in a new business that I was starting. I told David at the time, I told David subsequently after that in letters, this is not my bill. This is a sewer impact fee. And Section 2 of the State Enabling Statute states, I'm going to read it to you, payment shall be made by applicants for connections to the sewer system of the town who are constructing or erecting new buildings or developing for industrial, commercial, or residential use. I did not put up a building, I do not own a building, and I did not connect to a sewer in the town of Hadley. This is the landlord's bill. We are sitting here today, guys, because you've given the wrong bill. You've given the right bill, potentially, to the wrong person. I said it eight months ago, and I'm saying it again. It's not my bill. The, the, the law in the state says it's not my bill. You guys are overreaching your authority by assigning this bill to whoever you think can pay it. But it's, but it's not, it does not belong to me. Now I'll tell you one other thing before I finish this. I use, on average, 10.5 gallons of water a day, the tap room. Think about that. 10.5 gallons of water a day. My bill is $1,000 every three months. That's 10.5 gallons of water a day. You guys are putting a sewer impact fee on that building for 1,800 gallons of usage a day. I haven't. I, I just, bare, just just broke 1,800 gallons the whole time I was open. We use 10.5 gallons of water a day, and I'm being asked to pay a ten, fourteen thousand dollars sewer impact fee. That's not even fair to the landlord at, at that at that usage of 10.5 gallons. So that is the other reason that this thing doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make any sense to the lawyers I've talked to. Doesn't make sense to even some of the people sitting in this room I've talked to about it. Um, so I'll, I'll leave, turn that over to you, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But um, I'll, just, I'll leave, it, leave it at that. I just have one question. You mentioned um, when you were talking about the background that you signed, signed an agreement under duress. Are you saying that was the payment plan with David? Yep. Held my liquor license over my head and say we need this payment sign us. You are, you are not getting your liquor license. It's exact words. Do you, do you also have an agreement with the landlord? No, nothing. Well, I got a lease with him. Right. And but then, nothing. That, nothing to Just do with the sewer impact that you're in. Anything to do with water or sewer or anything like that? Just utilities. I pay the utilities. Pay the utilities. Does he say you have to pay your water bill or anything like that? Um, yeah, I think, well, yeah, I think the water bill is in the, in the lease. It comes in his name, the, the water bill is, but I pay, I pay the last three. Marla, do you want to speak to uh, as far as usage and uh, any those conversations you've had with either the building owner or the captain? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'm not sure on the water calculations, but impact fees are are um, derived through Title V sewer. Uh, it has nothing to do technically with the water use. Yeah, it affects the, the bill. Um, in this case, I think originally um, the building was put up uh, and was going to be either retail, I believe it was retail, and the impact fees were paid under retail for the full building of the suites in it. Under the understanding, under the sewer application, that if there's any change in use of any of the suites, additional impact fees will, will be incurred. Uh, so uh, I think early on, Joe and I met first out of the gate to, to talk about these. Uh, and originally, I, I just, I got a lot of documentation here. Give me a second. Uh, originally, he had. Uh, originally 75 seats uh, when we were doing the calculations, um, which was later reduced to 58 seats. Um, and then it, it falls under, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I believe bar or whatever under under um, Title V. So um, it's, it's times so many gallons per day um, times the, the uh, 1,800 gallons times 1,550 times 60 yeah. cents. Yeah, and that's how you arrive at the uh, the impact fees. So that's how it was arrived. And then 
for the retail uh, credit that was given to that particular suite, it was deducted from, from the bill originally to arrive at 15.3117. It was originally, um, yeah, we're, we're originally at um, 17980 and then when the credit with the retail reduced it, reduced it to 151117 for the impact fees for that particular. That's for the whole building? No, no for that suite. It was just the that difference. Yes. But I thought you paid 2000 for the balance of eight. So. Right, because uh, there was a, a payment plan, I think, offered. I wasn't part of this, but a, a payment plan offered. It's roughly $4,000 every quarter. But so you yeah. paid more than two? I paid two, just the two. Okay. But and 15 so minus two is 13, <coughs> not eight. Because the final payment is due on October 1st, but he is not. The no. reason that 8000 is there is because he missed the April 1st payment and the July 1st oh, payment. Oh, so it's not... Yes, yeah. yes, okay. he, so I, I didn't include it because right. technically he, has, he still has the money. Yes. So the landlord paid the first round of sewer impact fees? No. When, when, yeah, when, when he built the building. Retail, when he built the building, yeah. Right, but there was no tenants at the time. So well, the, the documentation on, your, on your, your city website mentions that there's supposed to be a checklist that the, the developer is supposed to go through with, with the city to say, here's the average water we think is going to be used here, and here's the maximum. I'd ask for that checklist, but there's no such checklist, I guess, in, in, in the town. So I wanted to know what that checklist said in the very beginning. The building, if my, if, my, if my room can seat 70, the one next to me can seat 70, and then there's probably 30 or so on either side. The occupancy of that building is well over 200. Um, now, if he just paid for 12, um, there's a huge balance there for potentially other people that could move into that building. But I couldn't, there's, no one has that checklist it was supposed to be part of the development plan that, that, that could be presented to me. The, the form he's referring to is under the water regulations, hasn't been used in, I can't find out from any of the staff in there how long since it's been used, but the reason they stopped using it is because um, we now involve consultant firms and engineers as things go through planning and everything to give us that information rather than a customer give us information on what they think they might use for water. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, part of my goals and objectives was revamping the water and sewer regulations, and believe it or not, that was near the top to get rid of that off the, the website and on mm -hmm. the regulations. But um, that particular sheet had, you know, has no bearing on, on how we do business down here with the impact of these. Marlowe brought up the the water usage. I'm happy to show you guys my last bill. It's a uh, thousand gallons. It was 900 gallons the last quarter. So it did go up one gallon per day. Uh, but I've got to get it. Wants to see the you know. I think we uh, see over the last 10 years. Cubic what feet. a cubic feet. Yeah. In the yeah. last 10 yeah. years since this impact fee has been implemented, or 15 years, whatever it's been, we ran into these different situations time and time again. You're not the first, believe me. You know, uh, we have other businesses that were owner operators. We have other businesses that they build a slab and they don't know what businesses they're going to be putting into that complex. And should they pay the maximum? What do we assess the property at? Everyone at a restaurant with 200 seats in it? Well, <laughs> where, you where, assessed me. Where do you where do you start? And where, you know, you assess me for the maximum for yeah. this bar code, yeah. <clears throat> and um, very rarely I've had 60 people in there at a time. It's it's, the, it's just an exorbitant, it's an outrageous calculation, frankly. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the water side, I can see your point there with the water bill, but on the wastewater side, when a restaurant goes in, and you've been through this process already with the grease traps, you know, and that's all Don't under grease trap. I know, but that's all under Title V, new Title V regulations now too that are, aren't really adopted. We haven't adopted the new Title V laws, honestly. So, but being that you have already paid one payment and the owners already paid a payment, knowing that everybody was aware of that, it needs to be paid by someone. But I don't think anybody was aware of it. I don't even know if the landlord was aware of it. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, do we have documentation? Yeah, it's a permit there. That's, did the landlord get this bill? Yeah, it was originally sent to him. And then whatever backroom deal happened in, in the three hours that I sent him down here and he came to see me, now all of a sudden it was my bill. Frankly, I think I, have, I had something they could, I had something the town, no disrespect, I had something the town could hang over someone's head. I don't know what you guys could have hung over Amir's head to have him pay it. No, I, but, but 
respect that I request that you not make presumptions about how we conduct business. It's probably not a good place to go. I can assure you there were no backroom smoke-filled cigar smoking deals being made here. I, I think we're trying to resolve this. I'm sure. trying to list. I was here on the select board when you came in. Appreciate the tap room, the business that you're providing, and I'm trying to process this, but don't certainly want any insinuations being made. I apologize for that. I'm a little frustrated myself, I as you can probably tell. I understand. Um, in the past, we've had agreements with with owners of the property and with tenants of other properties. So, like I said, this is not not new to Hadley for sure. It's not the first time. A, a situation like this has come into this room. I, I think you guys are over, it's overstepping your bounds and, and having business owners who did not make the property, who did not build the property. I don't think you guys have the authority to put that fee on that, on that person. Just, you have the authority to put it on the developer, not the person who moves into the developer's building. The statute doesn't say that. And I think it, you, you guys can't over, overextend yourself, can't overstep that. So can I just, um, um, again, I'm just trying to understand the facts here. So um, Amir is your landlord? Yes, correct. Um, what was the conversation? I mean, how, how, did, how did this move from Amir to you? Amir must be hanging his hat on something, saying that you have a legal obligation to pay it and not him. No, it, but, it's a, but, but it's a great point. David, in our conversation just before, when he was trying to orchestrate this, this signing, he said, hey, we're going to add Amir to this as well. Just in case, and this was his, almost his exact words, in case you hit it out of the park and you get so big, you need to move to another building, a mirror will be attached to this, to the sewer impact fee. Now, I don't know if you ever had a mirror sign anything, but that was a statement that was made to me, and that goes back to my other problem. Whose bill is it, guys? It's not my bill. So you can't just, it's just assign it to somebody else or try to find somebody else to, to pay for it. So that's, there was never an attachment to me on any of that. I don't know if David attached a mirror to any of that. I, I'd ask that question if he did ever sign off on that. Marlo, do you look like you were, do you have some documentation in hand? I mean, I wasn't part of the, the agreement between Mr. Nixon and Mr. Eckley. I mean, it was to my understanding that there was an agreement between the landlord and the tenant, mm -hmm. and that the tenant was to pay yeah, for it. That's I what think, I was told. I think that's where, where we're going, and ultimately it's as part of the liquor license application, a, a copy of the lease agreement, a lease agreement. In my mind, it's very clear that, that municipal charges having to do with utilities are the responsibility of the person who is leasing the property from Mr. Amir. That's, that's what I was just trying to get uh, to. Why, so where is it that it's... I can read it so to you right I, uh, here from so your lease. So I have, I have suggested that Mr. Eckerly get together with his landlord and work out an agreement among them. This is clearly a dispute. It's a landlord-tenant dispute right now. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, know, I don't think I mean, a, a, a municipality fee, a water bill, and a or a water bill and an electric bill. That's what that's referring to. Not for me to pick up any other. What about what about any other fee that that would that Amir would have? Yeah. It says, what, in number six, water sewer tenant agrees to be responsible for paying all water and sewer usage for unit C. Usage. Usage. And so I am doing that early for every quarter. Infrastructure fee though. Yeah. So does it say anything about tying in? If we were to go down that route and say that it's Amir's responsibility, mm -hmm. um, it's his building. our recourse would be to revoke his occupancy certificate. Is that, is that a possibility or is that would, would that be the step that we would take? That would be the logical thing to do. So in the end, it ends up revoking your occupancy certificate and basically Avoiding your other license well, anyway, so we're kind of back. I think, I think Amir is smart enough to not lose five tenants' rents by having that done. Right. He owned this bill in the very beginning. Um, and frankly, that then now it becomes a landlord tenant issue, right? When he shuts me down, yeah, sure. now I'm happy to take him to court and, 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 and take that one on. I, I think it belongs with the person that built the property. I don't think it belongs to a tenant when it's the infrastructure. The water and sewer is a totally different bill that you are responsible for because that's your usage for the building. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that we bring Mr. Amir in. Well, what I'm wondering is, um, to, to your point, I mean, that, well, we could we could take responsibility for for bringing him in. We could also grant a like a 30 day extension or something and ask them to reach some sort of resolution to see 
Well, I think we need to first of all send him a letter and in our discussion certainly say that we have decided that you being the, the owner of the property and the builder or the developer of the property that you are responsible for the initial um, installation of the infrastructure of water sewer. Not not your tenant. This is part of your project. How are all, how are all the other ones? Well, yeah, you know, where you, but when we've done this in the past, it's people that actually own the building and the property, and we've made a deal with them that, you know, they have, can do a payment plan, but they're the actual yeah. developer and owner of the building where this is a tenant, <laughs> not the owner and developer of the piece of property. So you in know, the unless past, it, with unless like... It was in a, because there's a couple of issues that I, I know we ran into, but I think it was in the agreement between the property owner and the tenant at the time. Correct. You know, uh, we had the I, farm I, farm meeting house with the hotel down there, yeah. and we did a Sorry, you know, so it was a, we did a payment yeah. plan yeah. with them, but they own the property, yeah. they own what, the building, they developed it. Yeah. Quarters did, but he also owns the property. Yeah. He, you know, did it there. So in Seattle. That so was another one. That was an owner yeah. thing. So, can I make a motion to continue this hearing? You know what? I got one more. The, uh, the property owner put in all the grease traps and paid all the impact fees for the uh, strip mall at Home Depot also. So that, that one I do. So it's. I think you're correct. It should go back to the to the property owner. And what about the new one that just went in down here? It isn't going in yet. Well, there's already tenants they, in there. Was the white one? You mean the white one that mm -hmm. just opened up? Oh, yeah. I think their situation is their occupancy. So I'm not sure how that's calculated out, but right. that's how they're calculating who's in there and what they're well, doing. Well, I was just there. trying to see. And it depends them. on the establishment, too, because there's different gallons per day. Uh, it, it per have you, did you have something to add, Marilyn? Um, like I, I did, I did want to say <laughs> that, I mean, I dug through records down there. Um, as impact fees has gone back to 2008 9. Yeah. Refresh my memory. But ten, ten um, years. And, and, and all my dealings in the paperwork of, of shuffling through that is, is we've been dealing directly with the landlord or the, the owner of the property that's building. Right. Um, you know, um, so like I said, it, this is a first for me also, mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't find a second. Yes. Yeah, so. As far as the impact fees, the, the town meeting voted for the for the impact fees, I believe, and they they were impacted and they're registered with the state, so they're all legal. The fees are all legal. Oh, whether you I think it's yeah, no, I, not correct. I, I don't disagree that they're not legal. I just disagree with who's who, in this particular case. And it sounds like a lot of history is on my side. Yeah. It's, you got the tenant paying it. Yeah. So David, okay. Well, you had a you had a motion that yeah, you was going to make a motion that we continue this hearing for sixty days. That we send a demand letter or hearing notice to a mirror and within that time period with a within 30 days to have a hearing happen regarding revoking his occupancy certificate or if that's something that we can do as the next step which will give you guys time to have a conversation so I'm yeah. here yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that, way you know, so <laughs> that way you can continue operating and um, Maybe we can put a little leverage on him to pay his bills. Mm -hmm. so. So. And I, I would second that motion with a with a polite suggestion. Just would like to make sure that going forward again, I understand there's a lot of frustration, but we have a lot of municipal employees that are trying to do their jobs. Sometimes these things get sticky. So asking for some everybody to maintain a sense of calm until we can resolve this. Okay. All right. Yep. Get my word. Okay. Thank I'll you. Accept that. I, I would say that, <laughs> that also that 30 days brings us into that last payments due also, just to, as a side note. Okay. All right. All those in favor? I'll get a second. Oh, sorry. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oops, Aye. 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 Yeah. All right, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, so last thing on our agenda is the library senior center sub fire substation. We've already done the fire substation. We've updates on that. Uh, we 
Library and Senior Center. And we'll take it from there. We have uh, planning board meeting next week on the, on the uh, 11th to determine if they're going to yay or nay this project again. I'd like to just say, I don't, I know we have uh, spent a lot of activity lately about trying to get the two for one parking um, in the entire site. And there's a lot of concepts out there right now. And I just want to see if we can maybe put on hold a specific discussion about what we're, what's being proposed right now, because I think there's a lot of options in the air and I just want to try to give it some time for the OPMs to come to consensus because it seems like there's some differences. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So does this group need to see that final plan before the planning board or can we work together as a group with uh, members of this group like on the 10th when we are going to get together and and finalize that plan before the 11th or does it need to come before the select board before it goes before the planning board so one of the issues i have with the process is that we're spending a lot of time and money changing plans trying to figure things out basically throwing things against the wall and seeing what sticks with the planning board and none of it has so far and we're spending a lot of money on redesigns and time and effort and from all all, all aspects of the town employees so um Last I heard was the plan was transmitted to the planning board today, the new revised plan, correct? So, but that's well, from that's, that's from the senior center, right. and there's a different one on the library. So typically, can I tell you what the consensus. process has been? The process, the whole way along, that we have worked well together on, is that they come, the seniors have an idea, we have an idea, both architects may draw something different and then they come together and come up with one solution. Unfortunately, tonight, we are still in the phase of we have two different ideas out that still need to come together, which has been a normal part of the process, right? If you were working with a neighbor, that's how you would work, right? Like you would have your own ideas and then you would come together with one idea. So unfortunately, this evening, we are right in that middle of the phase. We've kind of put some ideas together. The seniors have put some ideas together. And our OPMs are working together to merge those ideas into our final plan. And we're so all I, pushing I, very hard for two to one parking. Yeah, that's right. The goal. And so the idea is that that would meet the requirement where that plan would meet the parking requirement. So mm -hmm. I think for us, it would benefit us to give us a that time to put that plan together. So to answer your question, that is actually a normal part of the process. It's not an additional part. Oh, you I'm, may have other things, what I'm but this is. The process is not working the way we're doing it now. That's that's my point. So uh, continuing the way we're doing things with just sending things over, sending things over, and spending money on redesigns in the meantime isn't getting it done. That's that's the problem I have with the way we're doing things now. So the but are we ever going to achieve those needs yeah. regardless of I mean, what I'd we like do. I'd like to spend tonight talking about yeah. what I'll call strategy, right? I mean, regardless of what winds up on, so, so there are a couple of scenarios here, yeah. right? One is that at the end of the last planning board meeting, the direction was you still don't meet the parking requirements because we don't, we're not going to accept the Dover Amendment. So people were dispatched so to speak to see if they could find and said can we come back if if we can find another way so that may be yes or no depending on what happens with that group so if we if we can just start with the premise that some way somehow the OPMs come together and we do find another way outside of the Dover amendment exemption to meet the parking requirements and we go to the planning board, they're either going to say yes or they're still going to say no. And, and what I'm, what I'd like to spend time figuring out is I think we need to position ourselves for either one of those scenarios. 
right? And, and I think that gets to your point, too. I mean, it's like... I think the major scenario is that we took an 8,000 square foot building, made it into a 12,000 square foot building, and put it on the same site, having developed these problems. Now we're facing the problems of trying to, instead of building a building to fit the site and the, the amount of property that we had, we've expanded that, that building to 12,000 square feet and it just didn't fit in giving us what we needed. We can't expect the planning board to change their bylaws to suit a municipal piece of property when they haven't done it for everybody else. So they do have some guidelines that they have to follow. But that's what but I'm saying. That's what Start we're meeting with the premise. That criteria. But yeah. we're not yeah. meeting it with, you're not meeting, you've taken away a patio, you haven't really taken away enough of the building. I would be very happy if there was a 10,300 and something square foot building, if you knock that down by less than 2,000 square feet, to give you the right proper amount of space to park keep your green space because there's still a lot you still have to have green space within your property and that's part of a bylaw also mm -hmm. so now you're taking some of that away too which they're going to look at it's another thing for them to yay nay next week and you know we're just we just need to come to a better compromise of what we can do with this building and make it work and i think even 10,000 square feet 10,000 a little bit plus is going to give us what we need for this town so and it might not be what people want to hear, but I think it's what we need to do with making a compromise. What I'd like to do is put a motion on the table that we direct the Senior Center Building Committee to reduce the size of the building to 10,350 square feet or less, which based on planning board calculations would uh, satisfy all the green space, parking requirements, etc. cetera, um, would prevent robbing green space in surrounding areas from the library, which right now is surrounded by pavement and concrete on basically all sides and make the site less cramped and the argument I've been hearing a lot from people in the, in the town with, about this the last week the argument that this is going to cost money for a redesign you're right it will cost money but if we're shaving off 2,000 square feet off of the building that additional cost for a redesign will be more than canceled out in construction savings so there's there's no argument there whatsoever um, the voters voted for a senior center, and that's what we're going to give them. But we're, what we're doing right now is not giving them a senior center or a library. Instead, we're giving them additional bills, bills, and bills, and expanding project costs. And it, it needs to stop. So that's my motion on the table to direct the committee to reduce the size to 10,350 square feet or less. I'll second that for discussion. I just feel I, like I even if we do all, that, I we're agree. still not going to get the vote. Yeah. I, and I, it's going to be how many months down the road? You know, I agree with all these points, but I've said, and I've seen it year after year after year with the elementary school, with the police and fire station. We went to a full-time, we're going to a full-time fire department. We can't house our people in it. We cannot adapt to that building. There's no room for expansion. <coughs> elementary school can't go up at the elementary school with three wings. I just had this discussion with David last night. There's no room for expansion. Whether you think it's too big or not, at some point you're going to run into the situation where you're going to need to expand this building. Where are you going to expand it? The library, I don't know if it'll ever need to be expanded or not, but at some point maybe it will. And what are we gonna do then? Yeah, I, Joyce and I had this conversation a while back. When all this started We've out... We've all had this conversation yeah, at one time. When this all started out, it made sense to me that the building was going to come out somewhere around 10,000 square feet. I really fully expected that. That's not what the building um, design committee came up with. Um, I know the process sitting on the library building design committee that we went through, benchmarking and all of that, we had assurances, it was pretty good too, but assurances from the Senior Center Building Committee that they had gone through a similar process in terms of benchmarking and all of that. Um, part of the argument was, you know, I'm just going to say it again because everybody knows this, that this is definitely not a poster child for how projects should be run. I mean, we get that. Um, 
but nor nor am I willing to say that the select board was completely at fault, the building committee was completely at fault, any planning board's completely at fault. It's right. not anybody's problem. I'm going to keep coming back to the think about what we're trying to do with a whole bunch of volunteers and part-time elected officials. That's my mantra. I'm going to keep saying that. But putting that aside, we are where we are. Um, and we need to I'm, fix it. We need to I'm all there, come together and fix and, it. And I think we're this close to actually being able to present a joint design, um, joint site plan, excuse me, to the planning board next Tuesday that meets the letter of the law. And it is up to that planning board to then decide in their purview as, as a planning board with their charter whether they want to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I agree that there's so much emotion and personal opinion involved in this that it's not obvious to me that if we came back with a 10,000 square foot building that that would not energize people to say, good, we figured out a way to make this happen. And by the way, we didn't really want that building anyway. And next thing you know, and we're going to keep getting caught in these you know, my way or the highway behind the scenes conversations. And I, I think this needs to play out in the light of day. The planning board sent the projects off. Go ahead, see if you guys can figure it out. There's, it's not obvious. Maybe there won't be a joint site plan next Tuesday. I don't know. I'm very hopeful because we're pretty darn close. More hopeful. I agree with David from the standpoint that when I envisioned what this two project parcel would look like, I wasn't really seeing the concrete. But that's also the bylaw that we have that our planning board has, and I'm not saying it's wrong of them, but they've decided to not um, offer any opportunity for leeway on that. So just just like, you know, I don't want somebody telling the select board how they should do it. I don't think we should be telling the planning board that they need to walk away from their rules and regulations. So we are where we are. Exactly. I mean, another, and that's fine. Yeah. Another per perfect example of this is our fire and security <coughs> systems in our municipal buildings. Well, you know, we, we have the fire chief going around mandating all of these because of state law for all the businesses and homeowners now, for that matter, and our own buildings are out of code, you know, and we finally made it to this point where we're getting them all up to date here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the water regulations, the sewer regulations, all this stuff that we're mandating people to do that we're not doing ourselves. It, it's coming around now. I mean, it, it's we're there, but well, we need to keep up with it and and think about this stuff before we we make some of these decisions. Well, and in defense of the planning <coughs> board and the planning board's mission, I think what's really sad, and again, not placing blame, it's just the way it's been. But what's really sad is that the planning board hasn't been doing an awful lot of work that the planning board needs to do and should be doing because they've been so absorbed in these two projects. Um, the moratorium, this parking thing, it could have caught up. They, they haven't had a chance to even discuss it because they're, I mean, they're going meeting to yeah. meeting just talking about the site plan. Yeah. So that's unfortunate um, for the town because oh. we've lost an awful lot of time with and the really, good work that they really, should be doing. The moratorium, right? the moratorium really. issue is a big so, revenue. so what I'm getting at is I don't care to assess blame. We are where we are. So what I'm looking for is a way that will virtually guarantee one additional vote because it takes out all the concerns that the Virtually people, is yeah. my problem with yeah. what you just but, said. But if, so going back to our second option, if the planning board says no, we are forced to basically sue ourselves as the town and spend money on lawyers on both sides and this could be dragged out for five however many years in court and we still have neither project we would lose the library grant on and on so what i'm looking to do is to give us the best legal standing we have so that way if this does go to court we can say to the judge or to whoever else that says look we meet the exact letters of the bylaw there's no 
creative interpretations here. There's no Dover Amendment application required in order to meet the bylaws. But this cetera. plan but would the, actually yeah. likely do that next Tuesday, David. That's my problem. And not spend all that money for that whole redesign with the delay of months to the, do the redesign. The site's too cramped as it is. It, it's it's jammed. But that but that's also not that's that's, that's subjective, subjective, not it is subjective. And that's, that's you know, fine. And I'm making that subjective observation. But the, on the table. but the thing is, is that the green <laughs> space and the parking and everything meets the meets the calculations set forth by the planning board with these options. So, well, I'm just not wait for wasting additional taxpayer money, which is throwing things against the wall and sees what and seeing what sticks. We've done it way too often. No, but I'm, I I think we have the hearing scheduled for next Tuesday. So today's Wednesday. I mean, so have they taken have they taken a vote yet? Straw vote. No, straw just a straw vote. Straw vote. And the straw vote said that it didn't meet the requirements. So the committees started working on that again, which is what what these guys are talking about. And it looks like there will be something that should meet what they articulated as their concerns. There have been many other concerns articulated that aren't specific to. The site plan approval itself they're you know again, personal yeah. opinion which again we all Public have comment. we all have <laughs> and my you know my concern is is precedent setting i don't i don't i don't want to spend taxpayer dollars unnecessarily but nor do i want to get us into a situation where you know a developer comes in and, and they're in front of the planning board and then somebody wants something and then it's just it's a slippery slope and I, and I don't think anybody wants it in the other direction either so I just feel like again in the light of day just give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down but like, like you said the um, the bylaws are the bylaws and the way the select board or the way the planning board is choosing to interpret them is in their purview mm -hmm. so we can't tell them they're wrong because they have their, that right to mm -hmm. interpret their bylaws so Rather than try to f force them into court or to bend their will to to say yes to the project, why not meet the strict bylaws? Why not make it so there's no question whatsoever that? But we that's what I'm saying. This I don't plan remember. Is likely going I to do, do not remember any time in history, and the amount of time I've worked in town, and John, you people have lived here longer than I have, that no other board has ever sued any other board. Yeah, and that's the and, and if we go to the planning board and they vote no on this project, that's oh, it actually has that. Has that's it. where we are. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody wants to go there, Joyce. But well, I'm not going there. I'll tell you that right but, now. I have no intentions. Here's the thing: as we're sitting here, everybody watched that planning board meeting. Everybody watched it. I'm sorry if people watched it. Mean, <laughs> a lot of people watched that planning board meeting. What is it about that meeting? I, I believe there may have been one member who vocalized to, that that was unlikely that this project under any circumstance would get his vote. Mm -hmm. um, but the other four did not say that. So if in fact, mm -hmm. the, not, at, not at the meeting, and again, if, if there's something else, mm -hmm. I think we want to be mm -hmm. really, really careful mm -hmm. because, oh, okay, a little bit more okay, 10,000 square feet, well, maybe that's not all that we want. Maybe we want something else. I mean, I think we have to assume that they're professionals, they know what their purview is, and that they're going to do what they need to do on Tuesday. And I believe the OPMs are in contact with the planning board, making sure that, you know, their calculations they're using for the parking, the green space, floor area, meets the intent of the bylaw mm -hmm. as it's viewed by the planning board not their own interpretation, which was the problem in the past. Can we talk about the cost for a minute, though? I mean, because David's raising a good point in terms of you reduce the square footage, everybody knows that the cost of a building is X dollars per, per square foot, right? So you reduce it by X amount. Logic says that the project goes down by that amount. But can we just talk through the permutations of what could happen here? Because everything has a cost associated with it. In particular, sheer exhaustion on my part, I'll tell you, is part of it. But we might be there. We might be there. <laughs> I think we're already there. Getting close. But when you when you think about what could happen, you know, if we if we if we were to go to the planning board next week and a plan is presented and it on the surface meets the criteria, again they can vote yes with a four one. I think 
I think the one's pretty solid, so it could be a 4-1 majority vote and good to go and onward we go. Um, and then the senior center would continue with the, um, the bid process and all of that, right? So they, they would be going. And we would still have the conversation about whether or not at some point it makes sense to do overlap and swing space and all of that, right? But if they vote no, one option is we could search. If they vote no, um, then dead. If they take the vote, the project's dead, dead. until. So you can't. We couldn't then we bring back the ten thousand square foot redesign. Mm -hmm. You would have to. Make, you can't bring back the same project if they if they got a, a no vote. Uh, you, if you do something substantially different, then you can bring it back. Right. Whether the, the ten so question would a 10,000 foot redesign be substantially different? Yeah, I mean that would be a legal interpretation. Well, it would be a planning board interpretation yeah. because we've had legal interpretations. Right. There would be a planning board interpretation. So that would be one possibility. Um, the other possibility would be what we were saying we certainly don't think is in the town's best interest, which would be to go to court, go to court over it. It could happen, but that's not necessarily what anybody wants to do. Um, we could ask for an opinion and, and have the building permit issued, um, or ask for an opinion from the building inspector. The building inspector theoretically could issue a permit. Then, then I think the suit would become the other. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Then, we, then we go to court and we're in the same spot. We're in the yeah. same spot. So they're. T I'm just. I'm just because everybody's talking about this. I want to lay out everything that's in people's minds. Plus, you know? they have also said that they would go with the library, it's, it's so that we wouldn't lose the grant. But there's been opposition to not separate the two projects. Yeah, because that was the, originally the the thing was that they wanted both projects to be submitted at the same time because it was the whole site, correct? But now they're saying that they would entertain splitting the site. Correct. From talking so I that we wouldn't see lose that. the What are you gonna money? do with everybody and for how long? In the hooker school for how long? Yeah. yeah. And again think about the costs associated with it. But there's a price tag to all of this. Oh absolutely the price tag to everything. Yeah. yeah. Probably the the cheapest price tag would be to downsize the building make sure that we meet every possible uh, out they have as far as green space, make the site work better as a whole between the two facilities. And yes, that's subjective, but it takes that argument away. And um, I didn't just pick the numbers out of, out, of, out of thin air. These numbers are computed based on from planning board members saying that if a building was to be around this size, it would most likely meet all the parking, all the green space, and all the requirements that we would have. But, but again, without any Dover amendment. Without a Dover amendment. Right. But that's what we're working on right now that we'll have it's, Monday. It's just, it's trying to squeeze it out and it's not, it's, it's not what's best for the town. Well, so. so, and then, so I was going through the scenarios. The other scenario is on Tuesday night that um, something that meets all of the criteria is presented and a straw poll is taken. And it may be, again, a couple of people saying no. And then we could go back and look at a redesign. I mean, we don't have to force a vote, or do we? But, but every time we do this, good. it's ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching in terms of escalating buildings. Yeah. Yeah. And, and every time we do this, we risk them saying, OK, let's take a vote. And then where are we? Whether we're ready or not, they, once they make the vote, they make the vote. And we can't control whether they take a vote or not. Mm -hmm. So. We're rolling the dice every you single can, time. You can withdraw the project. Right. Before they take the vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think that's that's playing games with, with the process rather than going by the intent and the purpose of the planning board and the bylaws rather than just meeting the letter of the law. So, but so what's the guarantee if we wait two months, we do this redesign? What's the guarantee they vote again? jeopardy of losing the grant for the library. No, but well, if no. we do all this redesign, we, we go with this plan, how do we guarantee that that will suffice a vote? So there is no guarantee, but the plan, but based on the historical actions of the planning board, I would say this plan has a much better chance of succeeding 
than just continuing to throw things at them. This this takes care of their uh, concerns, I guess I should say their their valid concerns that were brought up. Some of the stuff that was off to the side, you know, it is what it is. But the, the valid concerns with the bylaws and, and whatnot, it takes those into account and meets those concerns. So that's that's you're right. It has no guarantee of succeeding, but I think the chance is much better than what we're doing now. Well, I don't want to speculate. I mean, I would want to yeah. hear it directly from the horse's mouth. Well, I mean, they're not going to give it a, they're not going to vote until they have it in front of them. So, I mean, how are we going to? Well, well, there's no way we're going to do a uh, major redesign like that between now and Tuesday. No, so we're delaying not. it no matter what, right? Well, I, yeah, we're delaying it either way, but I, again, we're, we're risking them voting on it or and just costing more money as we go here. But that we could be in the same situation two months from now with a 10,350 square foot. I go back to the Dover Amendment. We left a meeting specifically being told, and even after the meeting when the cameras stopped rolling, planning board members coming up and saying, if you get that third opinion, we're good, but make sure you get it from, you know. So we did that. We spent money to get one of the top attorneys in Boston with expertise in the Dover Amendment. And and got the opinion, yeah. and then. But again, we're trying. We were trying to work <coughs> around the issue, and so we spent twenty five hundred dollars on a letter from an attorney for a legal interpretation or legal opinion, I should say, so we could skirt around the bylaw. And instead, we're still in the same place, and we still threw twenty five hundred dollars down the drain. It wasn't it wasn't skirt. But but, it, but my point being, unfortunately, I I don't have confidence in deal making and and that's what we're doing we're making we're trying to make a deal I don't know that changing this to 10,000 square feet which is going to cost a fair amount of money to redesign and upset a lot of people everybody's upset anyways I guess that doesn't matter mm -hmm. but you know is going to achieve the end result that we want there, I mean there and I solely base that on the fact that when that Dover Amendment thing was pulled, I realized that there was no clarity. And I, you know, I would hope that you would have more confidence. And I mean, I don't think you would have brought it up to us if you weren't really confident that the vote would go the way that you wanted to. But I was equally confident when I walked out of the room the other night that that Dover Amendment legal opinion letter, which we didn't know, by the way, how it was going to come out. That letter could have gone very much gone in the other direction. Didn't really make sense it would, but it could have. Um, and yet, the, it changed again. So and I believe we have to not be too, I mean, we have to be not too scared of litigation because if we can't, Meet we all the afford everything, yeah. we but if we meet it. all the criteria and they still vote no, we what our hands are tied. Yeah, but then we can go to the taxpayers and we can justify. We can say, look, we've met every, we've done, we've we've negotiated, we've we've gave up things, we've done everything we possibly could to try to appease the planning board, and they still said no. Yeah. And under those circumstances, I could go to the taxpayers and say, yes, we need to spend the money to sue it and uh, to sue them and do what's best for the town and what the voters asked for. But until we've done that, but why are you just, saying but that is what we're doing? We You're just coming up with ten thousand three fifty. <laughs> Tuesday, what? It, it, again, if the if the building committee OPMs, mm -hmm. not the members, but the but the guys with the pencils and the rulers that do all the actual measurements come together, and right right the last I had left off was there was an, an 800 square foot issue, um, and it seems that they're they found a way to resolve that. Again, the committees haven't met to formally agree on that but hopefully monday um would night they would know you guys are meeting monday night well the library the library building is and uh, hopefully with some representatives so we would know at that point if that met their criteria so so what it sounds to me like you're saying is that there are other criteria what i'm saying is they've said that the site plan that we have is not going to cut it and that even some of the redesigns that were sent up this past week, it may not be the final redesign, but the redesigns that were sent up, uh, even the planning board was not really sure whether it met the green space requirements or the parking requirements without applying the Dover Act or Dover Amendment. And we've, we've been very clear from 
two members of the board that they're not going to vote for anything that's using the Dover Amendment whatsoever. Right. Yeah. So, um, the taxpayers didn't ask for their money to be wasted and for this to go to court. Exactly. And this they're is going to go to court. This, this is exactly what I'm saying. What are you going to tell the taxpayers? Now, they voted four times for this, and we're not coming to any conclusions here. We're just costing them more money. We just need to and take not a, a not all, it's, it's And like Molly said, it's not just us. It's the planning board. Right. It's us. But, and the two committees are doing everything they possibly can to resolve this. You know, I, I mean, we need to compromise, but we're really at a stalemate here, you know. Comments from Jane? I would request another week instead of making an amendment to reduce everything we have things in the works that look like we will meet green space we will meet parking and see what happens so what's in the works what? how, how are you going to get that additional green space and parking equipment? we don't need extra green space we have extra green space as it is so we're using some of that for parking the last I saw, the last redesign eliminated all the excess, so it's the bare minimum of green space on the site, and possibly a little bit too much, depending on the calculations. So, what I'm asking is, how how are you going to squeeze more parking out of, out of the site? I respectfully disagree with your green space calculation, and I don't have my OPM here. They don't have their OPM here, but they're working on it, and they are aware of the ramifications. And the limitations. And they've been in direct contact with the plan. They are working. Yeah. And I think maybe we should just make it clear if they can't Can get that, get it, we yeah. don't, we reschedule we don't it. Yeah. yeah. Right. We reschedule that Tuesday that's meeting. Right. Or we ask for continuation or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. Well, yeah. if that's the case and they can squeeze it out, why wasn't this done six months or a year ago? Because every meeting we went to, they made a new requirement and we have been going along and. But the two to one has not been. That hasn't changed. It, it's been there from the beginning. Okay. So, no, but so, the, originally it did meet the two to one. It was just the calculation definition was different. Right. Which right. they the, had the same calculation. Independent, forever. independent. In, in their planning board's interpretation. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I, I think that's the Yeah, you'd, you'd have to go way back to the beginning. Well, I, regardless, this is not doing. All right, so the there's, a motion, there's a motion on the table. And go forward with the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. No. Aye. You want to reduce it to the 10,000? Try it. What else are we going to do? Before next Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Does that stop everything? No. No. It, it, no. Let's be realistic. It's going to take it's going to take time to do. So what I'd ask is we'd have to talk to Jim or someone on the planning board and see the best manner to proceed time frame um, for, for extending it? If we can, I don't know if you can maybe get some, from my understanding is that the planning board doesn't need to know what's inside the building. They don't need to know how offices are arranged and interior walls. They just well, need to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. They, they have to know what's inside the building. You can't just give them a footprint and then backfill it afterwards. I understand that. What I'm saying is that the the fine details don't need to be there. The, the size of the building and how the parking is going to be accomplished is what needs to be there. So if, if we could come up with something by Tuesday, great. If not, then maybe we ask the planning board to hold off on the hearing for a couple weeks or whatever it takes. It's up to you how you want to proceed. But we need to get it built and get it done and stop wasting money. That's what it amounts to. So I haven't got a clear message of what you just said. So the clear message is that we've asked, directed, directed the uh, senior center building committee to reduce the size of the building. So stop what we're doing now and try and make a compromise for next Tuesday. Not for next Tuesday. Yeah, for next Tuesday, we're going to um, have contact with. If the they can, board. if they can, that's fine. But if yeah. they well, can't, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, if they could, yeah, yeah it's not going to happen. Right. I mean, if they can reduce the size of it and give them a space that they need and want, and I think with that size of a building, that we'll be able to meet their specifications. And I think we still can, for 10,350 feet, that we can get a good, decent senior center also. You've got cities like Greenfield with 8,000 square feet of senior center and other cities with, 
liquid that are much larger than us that have smaller spaces and can make use of them. So I'm not saying that fits Hadley's needs, but there's got to be some negotiation and some compromise here. So. so that's what we would like to direct the, the committees to do is to reduce the size of the building. Uh, so so it's the committee meeting, the OPM. Yeah. So yeah. they should instruct Phil Palumbo and Colliers. Do we want to get a price for how much this is change is going to cost? Well, I think that's going to be the first step, but... And does the select board need to vote on that, on that cost? Well, it's going to have to come that's out a change of, order. It's going to come out of the appropriated uh, money. We've so had our two designs. We have it'll it'll be a change order. It'll be a change order. Change order. Mm -hmm. change order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've done change orders before. With the elementary school building? I was on the elementary yeah. school building committee. I don't know how many change orders we did oh. on that. Mm -hmm. Some of them unnecessarily. <laughs> I remember voting, and I had just become legal to vote on the elementary school. Yeah. Yeah. Makes me old, John. Now you're dating yourself. Yeah. But we went through how many designs of that building? Several. Okay, so so the vote's been taken, so the select board majority wants, is instructing. So just from a practical standpoint, um, it, it's Jane, you're the chair of the committee, so you're going to go back to Phil Palumbo tonight, tomorrow morning, and say stop the work on the joint plan? Yeah, unless you guys want to split them and move forward that way, but it's, uh, that's... Well, no, I mean, there's. I'm they, talking they, about the one... Yeah, that yeah, was being presented. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, just reduction. So you know, strictly I, I work I on the reduction with, plan. Why I voted this way and why I agree, agree with David on this point is we can't stop this process. We, we need to really abide by the laws that are made by our town, and hopefully it'll pass. I, I know it's it's not what everybody wants, but if this is the compromise that we have to put forward. And this is what we have to do. I don't want to lose what two million, three million dollars. Yeah, of, of, of the grant money grant from money. the library at this point, and and whatever we got going on with the senior center. Well, I would again say that given another week, I think we're very close to getting everything that they need. Well, we're beyond that at this point, so we need to make. Well, the change. I understand that. So, and we'll have contact with the chair of the planning board to ask them him what. Our next step will be right before next Tuesday. Well, we'll I mean, it's going to have to be another joint site plan, and the, right. the joint site plan is going to have to take into account the reduced. I mean, does this mean we have to resubmit the entire application? That's my question yeah. from I the library think. perspective. Yeah. So our original so we're plan from that we zero. sent to town meeting. But you're not changing the size of your building and your. No, but their drainage no. and everything is tied in, so yeah. it's, yeah. A, it's a yes. single site. Plan. I don't think it's going to adjust the I don't think water and sewer that much for 2,000 square feet. Well, we don't know. It's a we point. don't know. Well, yeah. we'll find out. Same, so we'll same find as out the thing, you know, yeah. it's going to cost what happens X less, but that could get eaten up in escalation charges pretty easily, yeah. too. What happens if we talk to Jim and he says this requires an entire recent mill start from We're going to talk zero. to Jim tomorrow. I'm saying, what if he says that? Right. Then and it's another six months, or when did we start this? April? So five months of going through site plan approval. Well, we got to find out before we take that next step. But we voted already. Yeah, we already voted. That's the problem. Well, we have to find out from them if it does require that next step or that. But maybe we should have found that out before the vote. Mm -hmm. Take a vote. That's what it is. So. So, well, but I think Christian's asking, so, so who's, so you, you guys are going to talk to Jim Maximoski tomorrow? Oh, yeah, we're going. Okay. okay, and find out exactly what's involved, but then that we will let you know. Yep. And then if it needs to t take a different change of vote, then we can. Well, we can just talk about it on September because we're meeting September twelfth, right? Correct. Okay. So we'll be meeting on the twelfth, and then the question is that it would seem that there's really no reason for the planning board to meet on the eleventh. Mm -hmm. Not for us, in any event. Uh, you're the only one no. on the agenda, I think. Right. That, that was the only agenda on there. And the library at this point will go, well, I mean, we can keep going with the, because we're on to the interior stuff anyway. Yeah, we're, we're just going we to keep process. going. We have work to do. We're fine. 
But we do need to know what the timeline is right. in terms of going back. Are we again going as a joint project or are we now proceeding on our own timeline? So will, I just think we will we have that go. information for you. Okay. I'll get Great. that first thing tomorrow and I'll send it to David to distribute. So. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then um, then that we would also need, I'm saying, now I'm saying we would just come on the committee. Yeah. We would need to know uh, if it is a joint plan that we're going to want an estimate from Phil on, you know, can Cost. he just sit in the in the wings and wait <coughs> to see what Colliers presents to him and then wrap around it or does he feel like there's a cost, additional cost on, on yeah, the dollar side? additional cost. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just saying, but how much? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we go for joint, there will be additional costs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. To the library, is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. mm -hmm. Obviously, to the senior center as well. Right. Right. All right. Get back to the break tomorrow with the demos. Yep, mm -hmm. get that tomorrow morning. And then uh, anything else I'd like to ask him as far as details? I'm, I'm asking any, anything else I need to? You know, just whether the two projects still remain as one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or if they're separated. Okay. Any announcements this evening? I've got one. Okay. Um, October 6th. From 9 a.m. to 4 at the Hadley Elementary School, we're doing a bottle and can drive to benefit the Hadley Preschool. So October 6th, 9 to 4, bring your bottles and cans. Okay. We did say the Legion Chicken to Go on September 16th. Um, and the Firefighters Chicken Dinner, which will be Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. <laughs> Not yeah. what I had in my calendar. <laughs> Friday the 21st. The 21st. The 21st. Mm -hmm. All right. And we do have condolences for um, Edward Balunas on the passing of his um, sister, Beverly Balunas. Um, so the select board sends you our condolences. And yeah, I wanted to send Shell Horowitz a condolence too for his stepfather that passed away tragically um, in South Hadley uh, last week, I believe. Yeah, I think it's uh, um, his wife's. His wife's his, stepfather. Yeah, his wife's stepfather. Um, it's his stepfather. It's his stepfather. Yeah. Oh, it is his yeah, stepfather. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yoshi. So our condolences to Shell for his, his loss. Mm -hmm. And then also just the, there's this news release from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to um, uh, look into a planning process of the, 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 the horse barn at that refuge. And mm -hmm. if they're looking for public comment on it. I was just trying to see swallows? the barn swallows. Um, they're looking for input by Friday, September 14th. You can e email northeastplanning at fws.gov uh, if you have any input into the future of that barn there. So are they thinking about tearing it down? or are they just? I think they're determining what they want to do with that. They haven't had any real use for it since the horses have come out of there. Right. The birds have, that's for sure. Everything's overgrown. All right, motion to adjourn. adjourn. No executive no session. Executive session. No executive no, session. No executive session. So, second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.